Okay, we are live. XTC on Jazz Rock Soul, the profile on XTC, the long-running new wave powerhouse that was active from, as XTC anyway, from 1977 until the turn of the millennium. And we are on XTC on Jazz Rock Soul, the profile on XTC, the long... Zaragon here, the world's most ear-traveled trimaximalist. I have assimilated nearly 18,000 albums in my 38 years as a music connoisseur. And since 2006, I have chronicled my journey on the pages of Rate Your Music with one of the most exhaustive sub-databases on the whole entire website with page after page of year by year, region by region, album directories complete with song rankings. And you can see how I rank songs and my, pro my listening process right here. And then you can scroll down for the years, the English music directory, alphanumeric, and the international sitemap, or scroll down here for the years. Um, and in... <coughs> In, in 2017, I created, I initiated jazzrocksoul.com, the internet's first holistic music database that retells the story of music from the psychedelic to sophistopop eras, um, from a holistic, objective, global, omniscient perspective, free of the narrative biases and um, of that characterized music writing of when when the music was active and over the last 13 weeks i have profiled major bands in the uk canon um starting with the who did gentle giant bebop deluxe um renaissance electric light orchestra camel did chicago one american band japan curved air soft cell genesis a uh, king crimson and related acts like mcdonald's and giles a part one anyway of King Crimson. Last week did Queen. And um, this week it's going to be XTC, yes. Um, and you can go to the English music from A to Z alphanumeric directory and click on the X to see, well, all their albums and how this listener rated them. A guy who has rated nearly 18,000 albums at this point and has developed a listening ear for all kinds of music from around the world from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And um, yeah, scroll down, queue up the reds is your leisure if you're new to the band. If you want to hear more, queue up the purples and just kind of make an educated guess about what your own favorite albums would be. And so, and <clears throat> the way jazzrocksoul.com works is that um, artists are arranged by region under artists, and then when you go to the region or the nation um, or the continent, you um, then go to the country and it'll bring up a directory of, of artists. And since XTC are an English band, they are under British Isles, England. And we can scroll down from here to the X cluster near the bottom of the page. Or we could just hit the X right here, and it'll take us right there. And yeah, only two X bands from England: X-ray Specs and XTC. And I will be adding this um, to the front page after I'm done. This is going to be both a read-through of their history from the beginning until 1984. Beyond that, like Dukes of Strasphere. So this will be going up through the Big Express. Um, their career after that, Dukes of Strasphere onward, will be in a part two later on. Some of those parts of the page are still under construction. Um, I wrote um, most of this over the last couple of months um, and including stuff right up today. So there, there's going to be some spelling corrections and stuff as I give this whole thing up through 1984, my first out loud proofread. And I am going to edit in um, Firefox. And I am going to read it in Chrome. And I just made this collage today. And like all uh, band profile pages on Jazz Rock Soul, there's an abstract to their career at the beginning that summarizes their entire career. Then 
the members and then a background on the band, how they formed, and then go year, year, year by year in their development, their first singles up to their, and then album by album like that. And, um, okay. And away we go. <clears throat> XTC was an English rock band that released 10 albums on Virgin between 1978 and 1982, followed by two albums at Century's End on Cooking Vinyl. On their first five albums, XTC's core consists of vocalist-guitarist Andy Partridge, bassist-vocalist Colin Moulding, and drummer Terry Chambers. During their first two years on Virgin, XTC featured future Shriekback keyboardist Barry Andrews, who played on the albums White Music and Go To. On 1979's Drums and Wires, XTC introduced second guitarist Dave Gregory, who completed the four-piece lineup responsible for the 1980-82 albums Black Sea and English Settlement. After Chambers' departure, the remaining trio made three 1983-86 albums, Mummer, The Big Express, Skylarking, and masqueraded as the psych-inspired Dukes of Stratosphere. XTC went on hold after the 1989-92 albums Oranges and Lemons and Nonsuch. As the millennium loomed, Partridge and Moulding made the 1999-2000 discs Apple Venus and Wasp Star. <clears throat> Hi, QB. Okay. XTC frontman Andy Partridge got his formal start in 1970 when he formed the band Stiff Beach with Swindon area musicians. Amid a slew of gigs with a revolving cast of players, the band changed its name to Star Park. By 1972, bassist Colin Moulding and drummer Terry Chambers settled in as permanent members. In May 1973, Star Park played an opening date for Thin Lizzy. In the next two years, they gigged as the Helium Kids with guitarist, uh, and I just caught out, uh, that I added to the intro today, <laughs> just a couple of hours ago, yeah. Uh, just kind of adding some things at the last minute here. And sometimes it gives you red, red underlines, sometimes it does, okay. In the next two years, they gigged as the Helium Kids with guitar, uh, 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 uh with guitarist Steve Kartner and singer Steve Hutchins. They, oh wow, I was writing this really fast. They got a small NME write-up and sent demos of Andy's material to Decca Records. In 1975, Partridge assumed the mic of a four-piece lineup with keyboardist Jonathan Perkins. In early 1976, they adopted a new and permanent name, XTC, a phonetic acronym of the syllables in the word XTC. Ecstasy. They demoed a new <clears throat> batch of songs, including um, Quicksilver, Refrigeration Blues, and a cover of Fireball XL5, the theme to the children's sci-fi puppet series that ran on ITV during the 1962 to 63 season. In late 1976, XTC refilled their keyboard slot with Barry Andrews, whose style Partridge later described as being like Miro if he had played electric organ. They made their live debut as XTC on December 8, 1976 at The Affair in Swindon. XTC played 122 documented shows, but okay, I was going to uh, re <laughs> read it in uh, Chrome, so back to Chrome for the time being. XTC played 122 documented shows between January 19th and December 23rd, 1977. On February 19th, they made their London debut at the Nashville Room, a new wave stronghold in Kensington. On April 30th, XTC opened for the Buzzcocks at the Roxy, the epicenter of UK punk in London's Convent Garden. That spring, XTC gigged up and down England and played their first show in Wales on June 25th at the Grand Pavilion in uh, Land Landrindod Wells. Uh, don't want to murder that, that name. In the summer of 1977, XTC gigged numerous London haunts with hopefuls on the punk scene, including Ricky and the Last Days of Earth on July 5th at the Marquee, The Wasps on August 9th at the Music Machine, a band called London with uh, John Moss, uh, drummer John Moss, later of the Damned and 
the Culture Club, on August 22nd at the Nashville, and the models with uh, guitarist Marco Peroni, later of Adam and the Ants, on August 29th at the Nashville. While most newcomer, newcomers of this period shared uniform traits, such as brisk downbeats, trebly downstroke riffage, taut vocals, uh, you know what I'm describing there. <laughs> um, XTC stood apart with jagged chords, jerky rhythms, roaming arpeggios, and freeform moments of chance. XTC cut a session for the June 20th, 1977 broadcast of DJ John Peel's BBC Radio 1 program. This drew offers from several labels and the band signed with Virgin. Their first single appeared that fall in two formats. They promoted the release with a string of autumn shows, including a date with Harvest signees Wire on November 1st at the Music Machine in London and three opening slots with Blondie, whose year-old debut album had just taken off in Australia with the retro girl group ballad In the Flesh. On December 3rd, Third, XTC played the Front Row Festival, a three-week series of concerts at the Hope and Anchor Pub in Islington, North London. Two numbers from XTC's show, Science Friction and I'm Bugged, appear on the 1978 Warner Brothers release, Hope and Anchor, Hope and Anchor Front Row Festival, a two-record document of the Front Row shows with cuts by 17 participating acts, including 999, Burlesque, Dire Straits, The Only Ones, The Saints, Steel Pulse, Steve Gibbons Band, The Stranglers, and X-Ray Specs. On the 14th, XTC headlined The Music Machine over fellow version signees The Members, an act immortalized on the 1977 punk cop Streets. Science Friction. In October 1977, XTC debuted with Science Friction, a spastic galloping cut backed with She's So Square, a jumping tune about a girl out of step with the new wave. The single also appeared on a 12-inch titled 3D EP, which contains a third track, Dance Band, plus a Fender Rhodes indent with the whispered line, Good night, sucka. Science Friction opens on a brisk piano 16th note in E5, um, the, the oct that octave of E. Um, Intercut with sliding, dissonant guitar. This cuts to a pounding up-tempo tune in in B and F and F sharp with lyrics about a Martian invasion envisioned by a young sci-fi comics fan. Andy delivers rapid-fire imagery it ain't the aliens at the foot of my bed in a taut comedic tone. Um, Barry plays a laser organ line under Andy's roundabout refrains. Hey, put away that ray. Hey, put away that ray. How do you Martians say I love you? Hey, put away that ray. How do you Martians say, I love you? Midway, Barry plays a spiraling organ break that cuts to a sliding, racious guitar solo over Terry's unrelenting pogo beat. She So Square opens with soft Fender vibe tones over a standard four chord pattern, um, C, A minor, F, G, overlaid with a searing guitar tone that ushers the song. <clears throat> A pounding up-tempo new wave rocky rocker with skittering frenetic verses about an out-of-date girl who loves Vanilla Fudge, Jeff Beck, and who thinks it's 1967. I just wrote that last week on, well, the day that Jeff Beck, it was kind of like, let's just say it was kind of the wrong day for, uh, for a kind of backhanded jab at, 
at Jeff. The, the day I, I ended up having to ha writing this 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 um, song descriptor, but anyway, they, I've 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 profiled Jeff Beck. I, I profiled Sophie off off the album Wired. Yeah, go look up that video. Did it like four years ago on here. Uh, Midway, Andy steamrolls with fretboard dissonance in C and A flat. Yeah, that's a strange combination right there of chords. Um, then things modulate a step for Barry's turn. Dance band starts with an angular five note bass line in D with an octave plunge fifth. On a clicking rhythm pattern, scribbled over with guitar dissonance. Barry plays ray beam synth sense over the bass plunge verses and ska chord bridge where Andy where Andy sings with exuberance about going toe to toe to a dance band that plays everything from bossa nova to the gay gordon a scottish country dance yeah that's the name of a scottish country dance Andy plays discorded guitar fragments amid the whispers, gasps, and discombobulation of the final stretch. XTC recorded the 3D tracks at Abbey Road Studios with producer-engineer John Leckie, a sound man on recent albums by Anthony Moore, Bebop Deluxe, uh, their modern music album, uh, Doctors of Badness, Figments of, Man of Emancipation, Soft Machine, their album titled Softs, um, and Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel. I've profiled material off of Softs. And I read all about Bebop Deluxe a couple of months ago. XTC played January 1978 shows in Germany on uh, the 13th at uh, Mark Thal in Hamburg and France on the 18th at Bat clan in Paris. They embarked on a 33-date UK tour with a and Pop Punk's The Secret, starting at the Middlesex Polytechnic on the 20th and wrapping at the Bournemouth Village Ball on March 16th. On March 9th, XTC performed at London's Hippodrome for the BBC's Sight and Sound and Concert series. On July 19th, 1978, XTC returned to Swindon's Affair Club for a multi-act bill with Mod Punk's Urban Disturbance and 60s Scottish pop singer Lulu. In September, XTC headlined a 10-date UK tour with the Yachts and the Dazzlers, starting at the Manchester Apollo on September 11th and wrapping at the Queen Margaret Union in Glasgow, Scotland on the 28th. XTC then embarked on a five-date tour of Ireland, where they headlined over newcomers U2 at Cork's Arcadia Ballroom on September 30th. XTC promoted their second album on a 14-date November tour with touchdowns in Liverpool, Leeds, Sheffield, Newcastle, Bristol, and Birmingham. On December 31st, XTC made their U.S. debut at the Beacon Theatre in New York City as the opening act for Talking Heads, a band with similar avant-garde sensibilities. White Music XTC released their debut album, White Music, on January 20th, 1978 on Virgin. Side One contains three Partridge originals, starting with Radios in Motion, a propulsive number flanked with dissonant guitar in A, and lyrics about the U.S. FM radio market, with a shout-out to Milwaukee, the home of Andy's aunt. This is Pop, which appears here in a rough first draft, shifts between a wound-up, syncopated, ver... Ah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I must, must have, uh, must have changed my mind about how I wanted to word this. So I must have rewritten some sentence. Ah. Uh. Um, shifts between a wound-up syncopated verse and a direct sing-along chorus in C. Musically, it's a residence-inspired number with the credo that all music that um, with the credo that all music that's neither jazz or classical, including avant-garde rock, is simply pop, quote unquote. 
In interviews, Partridge reasoned that if the Beatles continued, they would have evolved into the residents. Statue of Liberty is a simple three-chord organ pop tune with lyrics that address Lady Liberty from the lens of boyhood lust. Molding contributes two songs on side one, the pogo frenzy Do What You Do and the spastic zany Crosswires, possibly XTC's most discombobulated vocal number. Side one closes with All Along the Watchtower, a Bob Dylan chest chestnut made famous by Jimi Hendrix. The XTC version at 5 minutes and 40 seconds opens with a thick, fuzzy keyboard descent. E, D, E, D, C, boom, and resounding plomp, G, followed by a jerky mid followed by jerky mid-tempo bars of the same four chords. Aside from Andy's gasping utterance of the line, there must be some kind of way out of here, XTC rendered the song unrecognizable from early versions, from earlier um, versions by other artists, I should say. Um, yeah, I should say early, from earlier versions by other artists. Uh, from earlier versions by other artists. Partridge wrote the bulk of side two. Adam Age starts with two chords, C, G, overlaid with a frip-like guitar cadenza. In the lyrics, Andy heads a futurist household with 3D porno movie screens and all-purpose devices. Uh, and he says, my wife's getting lazy, going gadget crazy. I'm bugged is a, I, I used to back like 32 years ago when I first bought that album, mis, misinterpreted those lyrics. I thought he was talking about having like a, like a battery bride, a wind up. I, I, I thought they were like a robot couple and, and his, um, the cogs inside of his wife were going haywire um and um okay i'm bugged is a jerky number with a walloping three four bass drum pattern um e to b dum bum jump bum bum jump bum bum flanked with scratchy high-end chords and fuzzy jagged organ sounds neon shuffle closes white music with a brisk jittery guitar farfisa riff in c that triggers a sequence of passages before resolving on a three-note jam it's it's gonna run you right through with a stick of bamboo the musical hallmarks of white music Hiccuping spastic vocals, scratchy discorded guitar parts, staccato bass, jerky syncopated drums, spiraling day glow keyboard tones, traits further heard in Spinning Top, New Town Animal in a Furnished Cage, and Collins' I'll Set Myself on Fire, were unique among the new wave and foreshadowed the like-minded album debuts of Devo and Lena Lovitch by several months. The ascribed hallmarks were retroactively dubbed Zolo, an aesthetic delineation for the kinetic, staccato, abstract, off-kilter margins of new wave and progressive rock, uh, such as like mid-period Gentle Giant. Yeah, there's some uh, carryover of uh, some uh, some some of the characteristics on um, the inner the 1976 Gentle Giant album Interview can correlate to. Uh, um, rhythmic qualities and the overall jerky feel on, on this album and, and the and the next one. <laughs> Sessions took place in the spring summer of 1977 at the Manor, an Oxfordshire mansion studio owned by Virgin co-founder Richard Branson. Lecky produced and engineered white music in succession with albums by the adverts, 
Crossing the Red Sea with the adverts, Bebop Deluxe, Drastic Plastic, Magazine, Real Life, and Roy Harper. Harper. The tape op, Alan Douglas, worked on recent albums by Easy Street, um, Under the Glass, and Griffin, Treason. Virgin in-house designer Cook Key conceived the White House, conceived the white music cover, which shows XTC in two-tone attire against a black and white background. Yeah, I love these. I, I, say, I think I, I say something about it. Molding and Partridge both don straight-legged white jeans. And these have mod-style arrows up the back. Yeah, I love this. <clears throat> the back cover presents three rows of pics of each member. Andy dons a red and black blocked sweater. I had a sweater like that when I was in middle school. Um, Cook also designed 1977 to 78 virgin sleeves for Ashra, Skids, and the Motors. The photographer on white music, Dennis Morris, also has credits on recent virgin reggae titles by Big Youth, Delroy Washington, and Leroy Smart. XTC lifted Statue of Liberty, yeah, great band indeed, um, as their second single, backed with Andy's Hang On to the Night, a brisk, pounding up-tempo number with exuberant vocals about late-night jollies. Um, with an organ, with, with an or with, um, with an organ break reminiscent of science friction. In the Statue of Liberty video, XTC mime frenetically in a yellow lit black room with mics placed in the torches of late, uh, the, in the torches. Um, with mics placed in the torches of Lady Liberty cardboard cutouts. At the end, Colin saws his bass neck against the upturned side of Barry's keyboard. Another track from the white music sessions, Traffic Light Rock, appeared in February 1978 on the Virgin multi-artist 10-inch sampler Guillotine, which also features cuts by The Motors, Penetration, X-Ray Specs, and Poet and the Roots, a.k.a. Linton uh, Quezzy Johnson. Traffic Light Rock is a speedy, punkish tune in A with a fuzzy opening riff and Andy's spastic delivery, cut by Barry's barroom piano break. This is pop. XTC teamed with producer Robert John Lang on a second version of This Is Pop, which Virgin, which Virgin issued as a non-album single in April 1978, backed with the Zolo Funk Colin Cut Heat Wave. The re-recorded A-side opens with Andy's sly utterance of yes, followed by a crashing combination chord, um, D, G, together. Yeah, D, G, with wiggling clavinet that triggers the song's chromatic chordal descent, um, for D suspended fourth to B minor to B flat. <laughs> Rendered with heightened tonal clarity and a funky bass line. Heat Wave is a jerky number in C with boingy clavinet and colorful organ lines. After a 35 second opening jam with twitching guitar, Colin blurts lyrics about a tan addicted female who steals his infrared. Lang produced both sides in succession with 1977 to 78 albums by the Boomtown Rats, their self-titled and a tonic, for, a tonic for the Troops, City Boy, Young Men Gone West, and Book Early. Um, 
Deaf School, English Boys, Working Girls, Graham Parker in the Rumor, and Supercharge. The engineer on This Is Pop, Bill Price, also worked on recent albums by Jack the Lad, Racing Cars, and the Banner Virgin release, Never Mind the Bollocks, Here's the Sex Pistols. In the This Is Pop video, XTC mime in a white room and hoard the, the aisles of a supermarket where the butcher slices vinyl and displays 45-inch records. Um, no, not 45-inch records. For, 45 is, is the speed, R, R, RPM, that's 7-inch records. Um, and displays 7-inch records among the cold cuts. Are You Receiving Me? On September 29th, 1978, XTC released Are You Receiving Me? An exclusive taster from the sessions that also produced their upcoming album. Molding wrote the B-side, Instant Tunes. Are You Receiving Me? starts on a deep 7-8 bass line in F7 with choppy chords and fluorescent key tones. The chorus in G is a harmonized question accusation. You are deceiving me <laughs> over a pent up cadence. Each, on each verse, close cadence, Andy makes sassy references to missing lips and other lapses in intimacy amid plunging bass and clapped rhythms. He plays a chordal plunge to F on the middle eight with garbled ideas about messaging options. I put it in a telegram, just like the son of Sam. After it, oh, I was going to make a note about how son of Sam was just recently in the news. That, that was, that was kind of a, a very recent news. Yeah. Um, The recently apprehended um, New York serial killer, David. Uh, maybe I just should leave that out. Uh, I don't, may, may that, that guy doesn't, doesn't deserve, deserve a mention on here. Um, after a twangy guitar break, the track speeds into a flowing open cadence final verse, followed by a gasping reprise of the intro. <clears throat> hey Mark yeah uh, indeed uh, one of the best English bands ever with one of the most impressive track records Instant Tunes opens on a 1 to um, 7 16th note bass line in G7 so what I'm saying there is that it's um G G seven G seven G seven do 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 that's the bass line do 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 it's just like a, a two notes away it's like um just a step a step below being just an octave disco bass line but it's do 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 that cuts to a ska tinged four chord verse um D minor A minor uh B flat F D D Instant tunes have just been, with fussy vocals about made-to-order pop music, followed by a rising harmonized chorus. And dun, in dun 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 dun, and vocal refrain. Though the labels credit Lecky as the producer of both sides, "Are You Receiving Me" has uncredited production work by Martin Rushent. A sound man on 1977 to 78 albums by 999, Buzzcocks, Another Music in a Different Kitchen, Dr. Feelgood, Generation X, their self titled, The Stranglers, Radis Norvegicus, and Black and White, and Trickster, Find the Lady. 
Go To. XTC released their second album, Go To, on October 6th, 1978 on Virgin. It contains 12 songs with individual contributions by three members, Partridge, Six, Molding, Four, and Andrews, Two. The album further pursues the Zolo angle of its predecessor with thicker layers of Barry's hypnotic, spiraling, otherworldly keyboard tones. Partridge wrote three numbers on side one, including the bookends. Mechanic, Mechanic Dancing, Owego, is a twitchy number with ska chords buried in swirling keyboard confetti and lyrics about the motoric German club scene. Red is an exploding, speedy, punkish cut with gasping vocals, spastic breaks, and blaring saxophone. Battery Brides, Andy Paints Brian, is a slow, lurching, synth-laden epic about sentient, sex, about sentient sex robots with their own desires. The subtitle references XTC's request to have Brian Eno produce Go To, a task Eno turned down because of his booked 1978 studio schedule with Devo, on their debut album, um, Are We Not Men, We Are Devo, Talking Heads, uh, More Songs About Buildings and Food, uh, Cluster, After the Heat. Um, actually, that was recorded um, right before he worked with... Um, yeah, both Cluster Eno albums were recorded in the same kind of 10-day set of sessions right before Eno went to work with Bowie on the second Berlin album, uh, Heroes. You know. But it came out in 78. Yeah, you know, they released the two albums, kind of, they distanced the two releases, yeah. And his own releases, Music for Films and Ambient One, Music for Airports. Eno, an avowed XTC fan, told Andy that they could make a better album without him. Yeah, in a 1978 interview with Trouser Press, when asked about some of the newer bands that he liked, um, the, the two that he singled out as loving were XTC and Wire. <clears throat> Molding wrote the interior of Side One. Buzz City Talking cuts between a jerky, synth-spiraling chorus and a trippy three-chord verse reminiscent of the 1968 Lemon Pipers hit Green Tambourine. A similar vibe pervades the rhythm, which has a four-bar ascending theme and the chanted metaphor, We Kill the Beast. Just double checking. I thought, thought there was an E at the end of that. They get more aggressive on Crowded Room, where fussy verses about overattended parties send Andy down the fire escape. Partridge wrote the first half of Side 2. Beat Town is a speedy new wave number with a modulating semitone chorus riff. Um, D to D major 7. B to B major 7. Yeah. Dun, dun. Dun 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 bum bum. Um. <clears throat> After a series of hyper ska tinge verses, I spoke to you on this lunch time and loopy descending bridges. He says you're all he says you're all communist. Uh. The hypnotic semitone riff takes permanent hold of the song for a swelling, extended outro. Life is Good in the Greenhouse is a stark, minimalist cut with a stripped, syncopated rhythmic pattern and lyrics about the benefits of plant life, mutated on the chorus with Mickey Mouse-like vocal effects. Jumping in Gamora is another galloping song with spiraling keyboard sounds and the recurrent chant, G-U-M-P-I-N-G, a backronym for the title, suffixed with Andy's proclamation, I'm religion free. Andrew submitted My Weapon, an alarming satire about an undisclosed disciplinary tool that he wants to use on an ungrateful lover. His super tough is a dark, twitchy, bass-driven number in A minor with reggae accents and melodic similarities to Greenhouse. Colin closes um, okay, did I? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. I need to, uh, I need this. 
on the send the party send Colin yeah Colin because Colin yeah Co because Colin wrote that once Colin gets sent down the fire escape Colin closes go to with I am the audience, a twitchy dance floor lurch that begins with scratchy, sputtering guitar sounds and coiling keyboard effects. When Andy exhausts the lyrics, a stream of half rhyming couplets about reverse performer audience dynamics, Barry overlays the rhythmic groove with nervy piano, boingy clavinet, and spiraling fluorescent synth lines. Sessions occurred in August, September 1978 at London's Abbey Road Studios. Go To is the second of two XTC albums produced and engineered by Lecky, who subsequently worked on 1979 albums by Simple Minds, Life in a Day, Real to Real, Cacophony, and Bill Nelson's Red Noise, Sound on Sound. Andrew's Go To arsenal consists of Krumar and Farfisa organ, Wurlitzer electric piano, mini moog, clavinet, and grand piano, in addition to saxophone on red and vocals on his two writing contributions. Go To sports a hypnosis cover design with rambling white text on a black background. The text describes the purpose of a record cover in wordy layman's terms and places operative words like design, pleasure, tripped, product, foolish, and all caps. The back cover contains similar text about the purpose of an album's back cover. Photographer Dave Eagle took the small monochrome member pics and the side-by-side -side color photo that appears on the fold-out insert. Yeah, these images. XTC lifted no singles from Go To because Are You Receiving Me, a non-inclusion from the same sessions, served that purpose. Original UK copies came with a bonus 12-inch titled Go Plus, which contains dub versions of five Go To tracks, Dance With Me Germany, um, aka Mechanic Dancing, Beat the Bible, uh, jumping in, based on Jumping and Gamora, A Dictionary of Modern Marriage, a sped-up instrumental version of Battery Brides, um, Clap Clap Clap, based on I Am the Audience, and We Kill the Beast, based on the rhythm. Additional songs from the go-to sessions include Sargasso Bar, Looking for Footprints, and Strange Tales, Strange Tales. Um, yeah, tales, both kinds of tales, Strange Tales, and strange, which each surfaced as future group and solo sides. Barry Andrews Exits. The go-to promotional rounds marked a breaking point for Barry Andrews, who felt underrepresented on the album. In December 1978, he left XTC. Andrews reta retained Sargasso Bar for his debut solo release, the May 1979 Virgin Maxi single, Town and Country. It contains three additional Andrews numbers, Me and My Mate Can Sing, Bring on the Alligators, and Mousetrap, dedicated to Auntie Renee. Barry also plays organ on three tracks, Disengage, NY3, I've Had Enough of You on Exposure, the 1979 debut solo album by King Crimson mastermind Robert Fripp. In 1980, Andrews cut his second solo single, Ross Moore Road, backed with Win a Night Out with a well-known Paranoiac, with backing by Fripp, singer Patty Paladin of Snatch and the Flying Lizards, and guitarist Steve New of The Rich Kids, and Rob Hendry of Prologue-era Renaissance. Barry also appears on 1980 albums by Iggy Pop, uh, their, his uh, Pop's album Soldier, um, that also features Steve New, and The Swell Maps, Let's Buy a Bridge on um, their album In Jane from Occupied Europe. That year, Andrews and Fripp teamed in The League of Gentlemen, a post-punk band with future Gang of Four bassist Sarah Lee. They toured extensively and released a 1981 self-titled album on Editions EG. Andrews then formed Shriekback, an electro-funk combo that issued six 1982-88 albums, including the 1986 Arista release, Big Night Music, which spawned multiple playlist favorites on U.S. college radio, 
such as gunning for the Buddha, running on the rocks, and the reptiles and I. 1979. And how are we doing with uh, sound here? Think of gentlemen. Okay, doing just fine. XTC auditioned multiple keyboardists, including a young Thomas Dolby, who surfaced soon after on the eponymous album by Bruce Woolley and the Camera Club, led by the third party in the pre-record formation of the Buggles. Rather than hire a keyboardist, XTC adopted a two-guitar arrangement with Dave Gregory, recently of Swindon pub rockers Gog Magog. They hired him instantly when... At the audition, he asked which version when they asked him to play um, 10 Feet Tall. Okay, uh, an upcoming song that I haven't introduced yet. I I was going to, I noticed that the other day that I, I kind of added, because I added this part after I had written about um, drums and wire, or after I had done the done, done most of the drums and wire section and and then I thought, wait a minute, I... Anyway, you know, I'll do something about that. Gregory made his live debut with XTC on April 18th, 1979. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think uh, that story about Dave Gregory might just be a tall tale now because Drums and Wires didn't come out until August of 1979 and then the second version of 10 feet tall didn't come out till later that year so i'm thinking that that may just be kind of an amusing tall tale it was told though by like i guess it was like molding or partridge yeah i okay i might just uh, i'm gonna cut that I might say later that they kind of introduced a tall tale to, to just make the, the story of, of him being onboarded more amusing when in fact he wouldn't have been able to have heard, he wouldn't have known this. E even as an avid f fan, as, as a close follower of the band, he wouldn't have been able to have known that song yet. They possibly could have played it to him in private because he was acquainted already with Partridge, but there wouldn't have been two versions like in existence if you know he joined early in the year and they they debuted like for uh they debuted with him four months before yeah. gregory made his light okay i covered that already or maybe i'm wrong maybe i got something Maybe it was this is pop they were asking about. I I I have to check that story again. I'm maybe 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 I got thrown um, because um, both both songs have two versions. It, it, maybe it was this this is pop. I'm gonna for now. I'm gonna change that to this is pop. Um, Because that's possible. That's... Gregory, okay. They embarked on a late April Irish tour with Dublin Punks, NC Nian, and Rudy and the Outcasts, followed by a 15 date UK tour with the Camera Club. On July 20th, XTC played the Marconi Club in Sydney, the launch of a 21 date Australian. Uh... uh... The launch of a 21-date Australian tour with rising locals, Flowers, who soon changed their name to Ice House. In August, XTC played four dates in Japan, where they touched down in Tokyo and Osaka with P-Model and Kyoto with Lizard, a Stranglers Associated Act. On September 11th, XTC launched a 10-date UK tour at the Manchester Apollo with the Yachts. 
On October 29th, XTC played a broadcast show at Le Empire in Paris for the French TV show Chorus. In late November, XTC went on a nine-day UK tour with Random Hold, one of two spin-offs, along with This Heat, of Phil Manzanera's Quiet Sun. In December, XTC embarked on an 11-day European tour with shows in the Netherlands, Germany, Belgium, and France, culminating with a December 19th Parisian radio broadcast. They rounded the holiday season with four UK dates supported by Random Hold, including a December 22nd show at the Friars Club in Islesbury with a third act, Roger Ruskin Spears' Giant Kinetic Wardrobe. Life Begins at the Hop On May 4, 1979, XTC released Life Begins at the Hop, a buoyant molding number backed with the quirky Homo Safari, their first in a series of instrumental B-sides. Life Begins at the Hop opens with a perky seven-note guitar figure. Do 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 one two three four um do uh d uh d e uh do 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 in D major, followed by a two chord verse. Um, D to A7 minor, with lyrics about an upcoming nearby hop, a DJ dance event for underage partygoers, known as sock hops in the 40s and 50s. The song's hook line, Tell Me What Do You Say, is sung on the fourth, G, and the dominant, A, of D. In the break, Andy plays a plucked, matted guitar run a bubbling fish solo. Homo Safari has a magic band-like rhythmic pattern flanked with twitching guitars, one trebly, one clean, and rumbling bass. Things briefly cut to a drunken bridge with twangy Hawaiian guitar. XTC recorded Life Begins at the Hop in April 1979, immediately after Greg's Gregory's arrival. This marked their first pairing with soundman Steve Lillywhite, a producer on 1977-78 Island titles by Eddie and the Hot Rods, Life on the Line, Steel Pulse, Ultravox, uh, their self-titled and Ha Ha Ha, and the 1978 Polydor release The Scream, the debut album by Susie and the Banshees. XTC mined Life Begins at the Hop on the May 17, 1979 broadcast of Top of the Pops, which slotted them between numbers by Peaches and Herb, Reunited, and M, pop music. In the song's video, XTC huddled behind the wheel of a dummy pink Cadillac before a domino skyscraper green screen and mime on a playground soundstage with go-go dancers plucked from Kenny Everett's hot gossip, including future Billy Idol flame Perry Lister, who's in the leopard cat suit. Drums and Wires XTC released their third album, Drums and Wires, on August 17, 1979 on Virgin. It features 12 originals, including the molding numbers Making Plans for Nigel, Day In, Day Out, Ten Feet Tall, and That Is The Way. Sound-wise, the album takes a more streamlined, earthly approach with calculated songcraft and intricate rhythmic and sonic nuances. Molding opens Drums and Wires with Making Plans for Nigel, a moderate-paced number with a 16-note bass line in three keys, a G, embellished with echoing drums and guitar parts that range from trebly, manicured sustain on the verses to clipped thematic picking during the solo. The lyrics concern a working-class boy whose parents groom him for a future in British steel. Day In, Day Out is a scratchy mid-tempo post-punk number with simple lyrics about anticipation of the weekend, Friday is have fun, and how the mind's clock often skips ahead of true time. 
The picked and scribbled guitar chords that run throughout the song wind into a syncopated 3-4 whirlwind at the closeout. Ten Feet Tall is a semi-acoustic number with a four-chord framework. Uh, B, uh, B minor, F sharp, G, A, and somber hallucinogenic lyrics. Andy plays clean thematic lines over Dave's warm, subdued chords on the verses and picked descending notes on the chorus. That is the way opens with faint utterances of do this, do that, which back monotone lines of child training. Um, go and speak to your knees, kiss your aunt, etc. The song is a vaguely hypnotic sui genre number, primarily in B, with a warm three note bass line. Do, do, do and a quiet ascending riff over a syncopated medium-slow rhythmic pattern. Trumpeter Dick Cuthall, once of Brass Rocker's trifle and recently an, aux an auxiliary player for the specials, plays the flugelhorn solo that carries out the piece. The album's eight partridge songs range from brisk, bright, and perky, uh, such as Helicopter, Reel by Reel, and Outside World, to layered, dark, and intense namely Rhodes Girl, The Globe, Millions, and Complicated Game. And somber, hallucinogenic lyrics. Andy plays clean thematic lines over Dave's warm, subdued chords on the verses and picked descending notes on the chorus. That is the way opens with faint utterances of do this, do that, which back monotone lines of child training. Um, go and speak to your knees, kiss your eyes, etc. The song is a vaguely hypnotic sui genre number, primarily in B, with a warm three-note bass line, do, 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 and a quiet ascending riff over a syncopated medium-slow rhythmic pattern. Trumpeter Dick Cuthall, once of Brass Rocker's trifle and recently an auxiliary player for the specials, plays the flugelhorn Helicopter is a tight, up-tempo song in A-flat with a slick propeller sound rhythm that drives Andy's creative imprints. Snaky, spongy guitar tracks, taut, sassy syllables. Though inspired by 60s adverts for Lego toys, the lyrics use childlike metaphors. She's a laughing, giggly, willy bird, and phonetic wordplay. I object to all the airmail that she pick up. Airmail. For a vignette about taming a boy-crazed serial flirt. When You're Near Me, I Have Difficulty opens with a brief plucked free fall guitar cadenza that triggers the chorus about Andy's first boyhood crush, which turned him from a sphinx to a jellyfish. The song goes from a litany of jitters, difficulty concentrating, just vibrating, standing upright, with a plucked staccato 16 note guitar figure. C, 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 B minor, G, A minor, over a syncopated hopping drum track. I could say a lot more about the structure to that one. Um, I love how they, they he hits all these notes in the song, but the one note he doesn't, he, he, he passes that whole time. 
the one okay he hits all these different keys but the one key he passes throughout all that he uses for the bridge um the note i'm talking about is um uh b flat he uses that on the um i used to stand high like a fangs yeah he that on that he uses b flat and f yeah and then he toward the end he modulates half a step in order to facilitate basically a move from g to the furthest chord away from g c sharp yeah it, it the song begins on g and and fades out on c sharp the furthest key away yeah yeah because usually on, on most of that on that that one that one um guitar refrain that da 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 it's usually going from g da 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 g g b g g b d um one one three one and then it, it goes up a step to a a a da no 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 like like that um on the last one it just modulates a semitone da no 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 and that facilitates like like a like a six key rise from g from from g yeah it's brilliant brilliant you using just every single chord imaginable like 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 basically have it's it's a it's just a brilliant way of constructing songs it's like come up with like um like like a like a solid theme with like four or five chords and then for another movement within the song pick a key that wasn't contained that was missed in that whole last sequence yeah Rhodes Girl the Globe is a mid-tempo number that opens with a twitching five-note guitar figure in G over a sliding bass line, F down to G. So like a high F. Boom. 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 F. Boom. 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 Like. Um, and can like rhythm track. The lyrics lampoon car worship. Hail mother mutta, hail piston mutta, and characterize the world, the world's titular roadways as a concrete robe. Um. Yeah. Midway, Andy, I, I was almost confused by my wording there, but it's, it's I'm re, the title, yeah. The world's title sake roadways as a concrete road. Well, as the roads of the globe, I should say, that characterize the globe's road. I should just say. And characterize the globe's roads as a concrete robe. Yeah, that makes more sense. It it, it ties into the title. It's that last bit of wording was just me being a, just a little bit too clever for my own understanding. Midway, Andy submits to the vehicle with repetitions of steer me, steer me, Anna, steer me, Anna, amid harmonic pinging sounds i love that sound i don't know of any other way to put it um oh hi keith yeah that it sounds like something off of remain in light yeah although this came out before remain in light so bear that in mind Real by Real is a medium up-tempo song that opens with a descending low-end guitar figure in G major 7 and goes through four distinct vocal passages, a verse in C with a five-note guitar line, um, 
I capped with an arching vocal bowl, a descending bridge, D D D D D D um F sharp minor G C D D no 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 Oh, an ascending bridge. Yeah, an ascending bridge, that's right. A tight chorus. Um, then F, C, real by, real by, real by. And a blurry vibrato descending middle eight. That's a little bit dense, just reading without kind of, um, I don't know. I, I almost wonder if I made it a little bit too musical, the description. Um, that's the way I am, but even like that, well, okay, that just goes to show just how many ideas are crammed into that darn song and how um, how much depth there is. Like, if you're a person who writes songs on guitar, there's just a lot to appreciate about the craft in that, in that song. Um, And the blurry vibrato descending middle eight. Okay, so we had a, an opening guitar figure, um, a verse, an ascending bridge, a chorus, and a descending middle eight. Okay, five parts there, yeah. The lyrics concern the surveillance state and how the ministry. They can film you in bed or when you take a bath. Millions is a cryptic medium slow number with a droning three note bass line in E minor and a quasi tribal drum pattern overlaid with a disconnected chordal pattern. Um, e flat, C minor, uh, B, B flat. Um, millions. Yeah. Okay, that turns to a scri that turns to scribbled bits, followed with subtle plucking. Dun, 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 dun. The backing track persists amid Andy's remote intonations before a false ending at 4 minutes 34 seconds precedes the final faded minute. Outside World is an up-tempo tune that opens with a jagged guitar line over a brisk six-note bass line in D. The vocal sequence has four parts, a two-chord couplet in C, she has six months singing in the sauna, a four-chord a four a four key da 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 refrain so she can't hear what's going on I don't know about how I wrote that F F F F A flat A flat G G C B C B C B C B C B Yeah I was I was trying to convey just how jumbled up those those notes are like like da 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 a little bit of a pause there. Is it just an exuberant three chord chorus? Um, dun, 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 dun. In or outside world. Dun, 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 dun. And a bridge about bad black and white men standing in their pig pen in B flat and F. All with the same unrelenting rhythmic pattern my god so we had the opening we had part one of the verse um one two three four five that five parts god and, and i wonder how and probably like the span of a minute i once again another song that could just leave you in awe as a songwriter like particularly as a guitar songwriter, like it, it can teach you some things about advanced song craft, like studying that, studying all the parts and how they trip pivot to one another. And, and 
All with the same, okay. Midway, Andy plays a twangy solo with sighing impressions of the title, followed with a gasping chordal plunge. The lyrics possibly concern a reclusive former starlet who secludes herself with six swans in a sauna. Scissor Man opens with a twitching contrapuntal guitar figure that lands on a matted perky pattern in G. Andy carries the first verse unaccompanied with taut syllables before Terry enters at 22 seconds in with a medium fast 16 down pattern. Bump, 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 bump. The jerky minimalism breaks on the chorus where Colin adds a two-note play-pause bass line under Andy's warning to little boys about a reverse tooth fairy who goes snipping, snipping and puts an end to evildoers' games. The final minute discombobulates with dub-like layers, echo, improvised ad-libs, disconnected bass. Very creative number right there, just unlike anything done before it. Complicated Game has a faint, nervy intro with remote, muffled vocals over a semitone organ pattern, G to F sharp. The song has a lurching, pent-up quality that never frees of its rhythmic harness, but gradually swells in volume with layered, dissonant guitar sustain and rage, and these multi-tracked sighs and shouts. The lyrics decry the left-right binary as a non-option, literally and figuratively. Andy asserts that regardless of one's choice, someone else will undo the action. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, when, t when, when the president of one party signs a bill into law that's like not really to take effect for like eight years and then by then it's like you have a president from a different party who comes in and then undoes it like <laughs> signs in a, a counter bill into law that basically undoes what what never got to go into effect <laughs> um XTC recorded drums and wires in three weeks between june and july 1979 at the townhouse a recently built Shepherd's Bush facility owned by Richard Branson. Lily White produced this and the subsequent XTC album with engineer Hugh Padham, a sound man with a short list of prior credits, the JLN band, Sweet, who also worked on 1979 titles by Bliss Band, The Jam, um, their Setting Suns LP, and Split Ends, Frenzy. Jim Mumford of Design Clinic Virgin's art department designed the drums and designed the drums and wires cover based on a sketch by Partridge. It represents the three letters of the XTC brushstroke logo as the features on a modernist facial impression. Per Andy's request, Mumford rendered the image with bright colors on the front and dull hues on back. Jill Mumford. Jill Mumford. What? Okay, I, um...
Mumford, uh, but I'm just gonna... Jill rendered the image with bright colors. She also did the artwork on Town and Country, a 1979 to 80 sleeves by Culture, The Gladiators, Roger Chapman, and Skids. XTC lifted making plans for Nigel as the album's only UK A-side, backed with the cryptic tribal miniature Pulsing Pulsing and the electro heartbeat instrumental Bushman President, part two of the Homo Safari series, a YMO-style tune with melodic similarities to Time is Tight by Booker T and the MGs. XTC mimed Nigel on the October 4th broadcast of Top of the Pops, which aired the song... Um, which aired the song between Madness, uh, The Prince, and Blondie, Dreaming. And by a YMO-style tune, I mean um, Yellow Magic Orchestra. The single reached number 12 in Canada and number 17 in the UK, where Top of the Pop... Huh. Where Top of the Pop uh, re-aired Making Plans for Nigel on the 20th before clips by The Selector on my radio and The Buggles, Video Killed the Radio Star. The song became an unofficial anthem for British Steel, whose striking union workers reached out to Moulding for comment. <clears throat> Australian filmmaker Russell McCahey directed the Making Plans for Nigel video, which, which shows XTC mime the song in a chest-tiled white studio, intercut with a loosely connected vignette of a trickster, Andy, prodding Nigel on his path from mental patient to suited workforce rookie. McCahey also directed the clip to Video Killed the Radio Star and 1979 singles by The Stranglers, Duchess, The Human League, Empire State Human, and Paul McCartney, Wonderful Christmas Time. Drums and Wires reached number two in Canada and made the UK and Australian top 40, uh, number 41 in New Zealand. Original copies contain a bonus 7-inch with two outtakes from the summer 1979 townhouse sessions. Limelight, a ska-tinged rocker with a tripping bridge and discorded outro, and Chain of Command, a brisk, skids-like anthem about servility with trumpet synth and vocable hooks. In the United States, Drums and Wires first appeared on Virgin's short-lived U.S. imprint. This version places Life Begins at the Hop at the start of a revised running order and relegates Day In Day Out to the bonus single. XTC cut a second version of Ten Feet Tall with electric, with electric guitar for their debut American single, released in December 1979, backed with Helicopter and the dark minimal wave number The Som Somnambulist. More about that a bit later. XTC are the cover subject of the March 20th, 1980 issue of the British Music Fortnightly Smash Hitch Hits, which contained the re-recorded Ten Feet Tall on a red flexi disc with the Skids track The Olympian from their 1979 second album, Days in Europa. Huh. I should actually... Maybe I should actually place that... Um, down here where I just, I, I just added this a few hours ago, this image. 1980, XTC toured the United States and Canada in the winter of 1980, starting with a January 14th show at My Father's Place in Roslyn, New York with The Units. They covered the Northeast and Midwest, where they opened three dates for the police and headlined 11 dates over fingerprints. On January 31st, XTC and Fingerprints played St. Denis Theatre in Montreal, Quebec with a third act, Heaven 17. Not the Human League spinoff, 
but a local band that morphed into Men Without Hats. Isn't that interesting? In late February, XTC swung through Texas and California with Wasmo Nares, who opened their three-night engagement of February 21st to 23rd at the Whiskey A Go Go in West Hollywood. The tour wrapped with the March 14th to 15th engagement at Irving Plaza, New York City, with support by Blue Angel, featuring Cindy Lauper and Material. Okay, and um, I just kind of went through and uh, this one a few hours ago yeah very, um, and, well I, I, I had the song of scriptures a few hours ago today I'll be right back uh, how are we doing as far as sound here goes um, I should actually maybe I should actually play stuff. it looks like I'm a little bit out of sync I just, I, I just have this. 1980, XTC toured the United States and Canada in the winter of 1980, starting with a January 14th show at My Father's Place in Roslyn, New York, with the units. They covered the Northeast and Midwest, where they opened three dates for the police and headlined 11 dates over fingerprints. On January 31st, XTC and fingerprints played St. Denis Theater in Montreal, Quebec, with a third act, Heaven 17. Not the Human League spinoff, but a local band that morphed into Men Without Hats. Isn't that interesting? In late February, XTC swung through Texas and California with Wasmo Nares, who opened their three-night engagement on February 21st to 23rd at the Whiskey A Go Go in West Hollywood. The tour wrapped with the March 14th to 15th engagement at Irving Plaza, New York City, with support by Blue Angel featuring Sidney Lauper and Material. Okay. And, um, I just kind of went through and, uh, this one a few hours ago. Yeah, very, um, and, well, I, I, I had the song of scriptures a few hours ago today. I'll be right back. How are we doing this for us? And here it goes. Uh, I should actually, maybe I should Looks like I'm a little bit out of sync. I just have this. 1980, XTC toured the United States and Canada in the winter of 1980, starting with a January 14th show at My Father's Place in Roslyn, New York, with the U.S. They covered the Northeast and Midwest, where they opened three dates for the police and had like 11 dates for fingerprints. On January 3rd, 
Mr. Partridge, Take Away, The Lure of Salvage. In February 1980, Andy Partridge released Take Away, The Lure of Salvage, an album of experimental dub mixes of XTC tracks. Lecky co-produced and remixed the tracks with Andy, who co-credits Colin on the Molding Pen songs reimagined for the album. Side One, Take Away, plunders XTC's 1976-79 catalog. Commerciality signal ad, um, sourced from Refrigeration Blues, consists of popping dub effects, propeller sounds, reggae chords, and a riff-based refrain. The day they pulled the North Pole down, sourced from Heat Wave, is five ascending notes, pinball game-like, overlaid with rattling sounds. The Forgotten Language of Light, sourced from Millions, consists of improvised vocables and vocalese against a hopping backward polyrhythmic pattern with low honking sounds. Steam Fist Futurist, sourced from Real by Real, has a phased staccato steam pattern set to a tight up-tempo beat with faint synth vibrations and fleeting backwards guitar cadenzas. Shore Leave Ornithology, another 1950s sourced from Pulsing Pulsing, retains the structure of its source with the same cryptic bass line and tribal rhythmic pattern overlaid with sax and whispered gibberish. Cairo, sourced from Homo Safari, has two interwoven drum tracks, a speedy tom fill and a kick drum hi-hat pattern overlaid with a bleeping synth line and helium vocals. The chorus, up up, down, down, hops with sliding hi-hat, disconnected bass, and a four-note keyboard melody, um, which i doing my best to describe the sound as stylophone-like tone. Side two, the lure of salvage, draws primarily from drums and wires. The Rotary, sourced from Helicopter, is a speedy number set to a hyperactive beat with echoing metals, discorded guitar fills, watery sounds, and loud, frantic vocals. Mad Hatton, sourced from That Is The Way, retains the bass lines, rhythmic pace, and trumpet sounds of its source, rendered backwards here. Andy's Do This, Do The lines reappear faintly in the middle. I Sit in the Snow, sourced from Rhodes Girdle the Globe, slows its source song into a deep bass dirge with rattling tambourine. Spongy sound effects and faint, lucid vocals against a clapped beat, overlaid with a three-note vibrato synth motif. Workaway Tokyo Day, sourced from both Red and Day In Day Out, is... has 90 seconds of near silent drone followed by a followed by a billing cacophony of brass that fades to a whirlwind of looped beats spiraling synth notes fan noises and sputtering sounds all bound to a matted dub bass line new broom sourced from making plans for nigel <coughs> renders its source unrecognizable with sheet metals, gasping vocals, dragging tape effects, such, such as a slow motion crash, crash noises and rusty hinge sounds. Um, for want of a better description. A punctual melody, a glowing, which I describe as a glowing steel pan tone dominates the second half. Yeah, I'm talking about that 
Dun 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 dun. Well, I can't I can't mimic it. But yeah, that. Well, another slightly kind of a of, of a sound that would appear on parts of uh, I think uh, Remain in Light. Take away the lure of salvage is housed in cardboard stock sleeve with an image sourced from a 1960s postcard of actress Jane Mansfield in a pool of blow-up dolls, with Jane herself removed from the image. Outside work, uh, 19, circa 1980. Partridge has an uncredited vocal appearance on Margaret Freeman, a track on The Resident's 1980 release, The Commercial Album, a 40-minute disc comprised of 41-minute songs. Andy also appears on the 1980 Alpha release, B2 Unit, the third solo album by Yellow Magic Orchestra frontman Ryuichi Sakamoto. Molding, um, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, hi, handsome devil. Yeah. Yeah, a, a lot of uh, research is involved in this topic. There's so many nest eggs in their catalog. Um, molding in chambers masqueraded as the Colonel for the 1980 Virgin single, Too Many Cooks in the Kitchen, a perky ska song in D with playful vocables and a slick harmonized chorus. The B-side, I Need Protection, is a slow droning number in E with searing guitar, tribal percussion, and a chanted chorus. Colin wrote both sides, which feature Hendry and uh, Rob Hendry, the uh, prologue era rena renaissance guy that was on that, uh, uh, on that uh, Andrew single, and fingerprints keyboardist Steve King. Gregory backs Peter Gabriel on two tracks, the fractious post-punk anthem, I Don't Remember, and the melodramatic art pop ballad, Family Snapshot, on the ex-Genesis singer, singer's third self-titled solo album, alternately known as Melt, due to the cover art. The album also features appearances by Fripp, Kate Bush, Larry Fast, a.k.a. Synergy, Jam frontman Paul Weller, and Gabriel's one-time Genesis bandmate Phil Collins. XTC recorded their fourth album in mid-1980 and embarked on a 10-date French tour with The Police, Scoffish, and The Beat, replaced after four dates by UB40. On September 5th, XTC launched a 19-date Australasian tour at the Barton Town Hall in Adelaide with Magazine, who opened four shows, including dates with Flowers and Models, on a uh, uh, September 6th date at Festival Hall in Melbourne, and Newcomers in Excess on September 19th at Festival Hall in Brisbane. In October, XTC did another round of Canadian and U.S. West Coast, West Coast dates with the police, including stops in Seattle, um, October 28th at the Paramount Theater, and Portland on the 29th at the Portland Paramount Theater, where um, local rock critic for the Oregonian, Martin Hewley, uh, years later related that he was there at that 1980 Portland Paramount uh, bill of the police and XTC. And while he went there, he had heard of XTC before. Um, they, they were relatively newly, their introduction to the U.S. market was relatively recent at that point. Um, he, he was into the police at that point. He hadn't heard XTC yet. but So he went to see the police with curiosity about XTC. He said that night his loyalty was stolen. He became a huge XTC fan that night and gradually kind of lost interest in, in Sting and, and company. Those were his words. Yeah. In California, the two bands were joined on three consecutive dates by a third act, Oingo Boingo, whose quirky, spastic style borrowed heavily from the first two XTC albums. On December 3rd and 4th, XTC opened for The Cars at Madison Square Garden. Well, there's a 
an audience. They closed out the year with 10 UK dates supported by Scottish New Waver's Modern Man, who Midgeur would produce. Wait Till Your Boat Goes Down. On March 28, 1980, XTC released Wait Till Your Boat Goes Down, a ska-tinged sing-along backed with the re-recorded 10 feet tall. Wait Till Your Boat Goes Down opens with a ship bell dirge in B-flat and cuts to a, a sea shanty chorus with choppy chords in F and faint steam sounds. The track proceeds as a mid-tempo reggae rock number with lyrics about the warranted prospects of a gold digger who's sailing in social circles in a sea of diamonds and wine. In the middle eight, Andy warns that too much caviar only points to the middle age spread. There won't be room for many playboys in your single bed. <clears throat> XTC released their fourth album, Black Sea, on September 12, 1980 on Virgin. It features nine Partridge originals and two molding numbers, Love at First Sight and the sprightly lead-off single Generals and Majors. Respectable Street opens with the gramophone-rendered verse comprised of faint piano, simulated surface noise, and the garbled preamble about decency's jigsaw. The song proper starts with a mid-tempo guitar riff in B with hammered seconds, which drives the chorus, where Andy lampoons artificial displays of status. What do you think he bought the... What do you think he bought that car for? Cause he realized this is respectable street. On each bridge in F sharp, Andy sings of unseemly details beneath the surface such as abortion, contraception, diseases, amid Collins arching vocalese. Um, so basically the song is really that, that things are, aren't as straight laced as, as the image that these really square uppity uh, communities would like to put forth. That there are actually just people, you know, there are people having sex, you know, and doing the dirty and uh, midway, Andy plays a scratchy solo in C, which triggers a modulation to G for the final verse about Saturday night retching, um, where he mocks uppity expressions as the kind of look that says they're perfect. That one, I had to look that one up. I thought I was going to add a... Make this... Oh, that's why I didn't... I was going to describe it I, I was going to add a definition for that word, and then when I saw the definition, I said, no, I guess I'll just, people can look that up if they want to. You can see it right. I don't need to read it out if you're watching <laughs> the screen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that line, the more I read it, I, I noticed that it said quite a, a mouthful. The kind of look that says they're perfect. Yeah. Yeah, with this being like the real backhand, right? That <laughs> Generals and Majors <clears throat> is an up tempo number with a five note guitar theme in F on a straight beat with a syncopated sliding hi hat. Andy, in a nonchalant tone, sings of military commanders and their alleged battle lust. Generals and majors always seem so unhappy lest they got a war. Um, no, you know what? I should be, uh, that's not Andy in a nonchalant tone. That's Colin in a nonchalant tone. Colin in a nonchalant tone. Each pre-chorus has a whistling complement to the theme. That is one thing I never learned how to do. I couldn't quite get it as a as a child. Yeah, I don't know how to whistle. On the chorus, Andy entertains the subject with "Your World War Three is drawing near." To think uh, around the same time, uh, a whistling hook is also on "Games Without Frontiers." Mm -hmm. Uh, 
I mean, okay, Andy entertains the subject. Oh, doggone it. Twice. I usually don't mention the name. I usually don't don't end up mentioning the name the name of the singer twice, but yeah. Uh. On the chorus, Andy entertains the subject with Your World War Three is drawing near amid a loosened cadence of chorused guitar. I think that's what I heard there, and droning vocalies against the same un unrelenting back. You know the chorus guitar effect it was something that Andy Andy Summers used used quite extensively. Um, the Fix also used it. Um, on the instrumental break, Dobro filigree overlays the main theme down an octave. Living through another Cuba opens with arching vocalis mirrored by a sinewy guitar figure in A against an upbeat polyrhythm, a straight backbeat overlaid with Yeah, Tama. Overlaid with Tama Tom fills. And a hissing hi-hat. Each verse, um, C sharp, F sharp, B, E, da, da, na, 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 injects the harmonized chorus line between Andy's fluttering Cold War speculations, intercut with a two-bar guitar refrain. Later, the track swells with overdubs, uh, snaky guitar lines, vocal ad libs, and comes undone amid steamy beatbox emissions. The fading sounds give way to Love at First Sight has a twitching seven-note guitar figure in D with hammered sixes against a pulsating bass line and a sliding hi-hat. Colin hints at the way that love plays out in Fling's first verse, shotgun weddings in the second verse, and formal courtship in the third verse. Andy flanks Colin throughout with channeled vocables, vibrating guitar overdubs, and remote ad libs. What they want is. Rocket from a Bottle opens with a faint eight note bass line in F against a jittery 16th note piano pattern in the dominant C. And layered echoing drums. Andy enters with distant gasping vocables followed with shaky yet jubilant lines that use the flight of birds as metaphors for the excitement of a new love affair. I've been up with the locks, I've been shooting off sparks. The song crashes on a non sequitur chord, D, the drone of which fades into No Language in Our Lungs, starts with a jangly, distorted guitar figure in E that settles into a medium-slow dirgy groove, mostly in B and F sharp, with lyrics about the impotency of speech and how the average powerless individual is leaving nothing behind, just chiseled stones, with no chance to speak before we're bones. After the there is no muscle in the line, Andy plays a pronged roaming solo, followed by a choppy middle eight with loopy effects and memories of his younger idealism in, in this set of lines. Um, I thought I had the whole world in my mouth. I thought I could say what I wanted to say. For a second, that thought became a sword in my hand. I could slay any problem that would stand in my way. I felt just like a crusader, lion heart, 
a Holy Land invader. Towers of London is a flowing mid-tempo number with a sliding guitar motif in F with an imposed second and lyrics that address the sacrifice of workers behind London's Victorian towers and monuments. When they had built you, did you watch over the man who fell? Each bridge in C contains slice of life flashes of London's 19th century working poor. Um, grenadier guardsmen, <clears throat> spikes in the rails to their very own heaven. One line mentions the merchants of Stepney, a once designated East London district notorious for overcrowding, poverty, and crime. Yeah, when I when I was like looking over the um, lyrics on the Chalk Hills site, and and uh, because um, I've known these songs for over thirty years. I've known the music anyway. But um, in some cases, I was really, really probing the lyrics closer than I had ever done before. I kind of like half knew a lot of the, the lyrics um, to, to a lot of these songs. And then this time I really sat down to just try and summarize, parse and summarize the meaning as best as I could. And um, like when I'd see like a name like Stephanie, I would then look up, I would then Google that name to learn a bit more about that, to learn what just what meant what that what that name might entail what that yeah especially to, to the english yeah and so that that the name stephanie as a township is synonymous with uh with the problem of, of um the problems of of um working class uh depressed neighborhoods and such an airy refrain about, about the bridge that doesn't go in the direction of Dublin hints at the plight of Irish immigrants during this period. The song has a choppy middle eight in F sharp, where Andy mentions the lingering imprints of the toil in a painting, in engraving, clear as children's chalk lines on the paving. The basic structure modulates to G for a playout of the slide motif with harmonized vocals. Paper and iron, notes and coins, fades in with a nervy, matted, staccato guitar figure in A, with faint, counteracting notes. Chambers enters with a booming, rumbling drum pattern that heralds the chorus. Andy sings of working for bills, paper, and coins, iron, that won't buy Eden, but will keep him clothed, or the right to keep my tie on all in the name of the unicorn and lion, in reference to the royal coat of arms. The song has a floodgate verse, a brisk E strum, and a three chord drop, where Andy, to keep his kids from starving, works overtime for one more farthing, a former UK... Uh. a former UK monetary unit of the least amount. Later, he acknowledges that the factory feeds me and laments how the church implies that the meek shall inherit the earth. Burning with Optimism's Flames is a medium uptempo song with a choppy bar chord riff in C with hammered fourths. Dun, D, C, third, Third, four, third, four, third, dun, 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 d
imposed 3-4 on 4-4 with rattling hi-hat. Andy sings rapid fire lines um, to Terry's 3-4 time about a girl who's throwing brightness like some aura, like some aurora. On the bridge, he reveals how she makes light and banishes night. Um, all you do is smile over a two chord pattern. All you do is smile over a two chord pattern. Um, oh yeah, B, F. She claims she's find a way to make her own light. All she do is smile and banish the night on a sliding 4-4 four, four beat. The chorus hops on a three chord pattern. She says she, C, G, F. With skittering undercurrents capped by a refrain of gasping syllables on a roaming bass line. He resolves the bird in B middle eight with a sliding tropical guitar break. The gasping refrain, G, um, F, E, G, F sharp, E, um, ba, na, 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 returns and ushers a swelling outro in C with ad libs and frip like cadenzas, all swallowed in an upward slide that fades to Sergeant Rock is going to help me, is a mid tempo number in E with a chromatic guitar figure. Don't no no. So the second, all in the key of E, it's got an imposed second, a suspended second, or like a hammered second that goes down a semitone to a diminished second, F, F on the E, and then finally down to the root. Yeah, the open E. And a bumping rhythmic pattern flanked with vibra slap. <laughs> Andy, singing as a tween at the outset of puberty, goes to his comic book hero, DC character Sergeant Rock, for advice on courting his first crush. Immersed in that comic world, he details the mission in cartoon war terms. I'm enlisting all the seas aid. Need a sustain help with the maid. Yeah, get the experts on Mademoiselle's. He, he could just diffuse any bombshell. On the bridge in C, Andy sings of his desire to become the man he idolizes. If I could only be tough like him, in an airy, feminine tone, an indicator of lingering childlike traits. He imagines that, as a rock-like man, he gets the girl. When my own small battle of the sexes, in the middle eight, a CB radio tone Andy, perhaps observing from a distance, reckons that the quest could be challenging. Some girls can make themselves so cold a no man's land. Travels in Nihilin, a seven minute number, is a droning percussive jam in E with a faint running pausing bass line amid chambers thrash, alternately running and pausing bass line, amid chambers thrashing pounding Tama drum layers. Andy, submerged in the stormy sonic currents, deadpans about the spoils of cynical youth and vain, greedy adults, all travelers in Nihilum, a realm that embodies nihilism. Yeah, it's, it's interesting how, um, it, it's a very kind of just repetitive, churning, droning piece, very uh, post-punk bleak um it's it's interesting how how the longest song is the one with well the least um i didn't have as much to say about it because i, I that's pretty much all, all there is to really describe about it. it's it's repetitive it, it's grown on me over the years um 
Sometimes they'll they'll cram like 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 a, a half a side worth of ideas into a three minute song, and then and then take like a, a simpler idea and kind of stretch it out, like in this case. Sessions took place at the townhouse in June, July 1980 with Lily White, who produced Black Sea in succession with Melt and the debut albums by the Psychedelic Furs and U2, plus the singular albums by Sector 27 and The Brains. Padham engineered Black Sea and Melt in sequence with Drama, the 1980 Yes album recorded with The Buggles. The Black Sea credits attribute tape twirling to soundman Phil Vinal, who worked with Chaz Jenkel, and Nick uh, Launay, uh, who worked with Kodak, Cuban Heels, uh, Jane Kennaway, and M. Black Sea sports cover images by one Ralph Hall, who photographed the band front and back as Victorian divers amid prop wheels and painted nautical trappings. I, you know another band that, 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 that did the like 19th century diver look on a cover was um, 10cc on deceptive bends. Yeah and 10cc are like wearing the, wearing those big metal like uh, um, face domes. Um, original copies came in a green, in a sea green outer bag. The inner sleeve contains the lyrics and handwritten cursive. Yeah, it comes in a bag that looks that has this uh, this color and this typeface to it. Generals and Majors appeared five weeks in advance of the album as the lead single, backed with the hopping non-album cut, Don't Lose Your Temper. Virgin also pressed the single on 12-inch with two additional songs, Smokeless Zone and The Somnambulist. Don't Lose Your Temper is a brief, up-tempo tune with a matted eight-note opening figure that triggers a two-chord chorus, um, b, 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 e, e, where Andy begs his girl not to lose her temper in the literal, such as he wants her to keep her, in the literal, keep your temper as opposed to figurative, calm down sense. In other words, he wants her to keep her temper. Yeah, it's confusing because most people, when they, that phrase usually means calm down. He's saying, no, don't, don't ever lose your don't ever get rid of your temper don't lose your <laughs> it's a it's a play on, it's a play on that idiom he laments the effects of her new job and linguaphone voice then asks whatever happened to my fighting biting lighting lioness whatever happened to my fighting biting lightning lioness the two chord pattern modulates through multiple verses and bridges over a jitterbug beat. 
Smokeless Zone is a fast track with a three note bass line boom, 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 boom. Filled with hyperactive drums, wheezing harmonica, and lyrics about Andy's struggle to maintain a clean air environment in a now polluted London. On the verse in C minor, he laments, England's green, um, one so pleasant land, and how the whole damn place is going to turn to sand. The Somnambulist is a slow, dark, lucid piece with a faint four note bass line on a pulse rhythmic pattern. Andy, in perhaps his lowest register, sings two stanzas about a sleepwalking woman. They gradually overlay the track with a faint flute tone synth melody. Best descriptor I could think of. Flute tone synth melody. And distant electro spark sounds. This song marks XTC's single foray into the minimal wave style purveyed by Gary Newman, John Fox, and Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. In the Generals and Majors video, XCC portray butlers in a mansion with four generals, one portrayed by <laughs> Richard Branson, who Colin serves a gourmet gun, and I guess they were really embarrassed by that video. I guess Richard Branson showed up at the, at the video shoot and just demanded to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> that, guy, that guy just can't get in enough self-promotion, can he? <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't name himself executive producer on the album. That's um, that that's the kind of vanity thing that label owners sometimes do. That, yeah, I, always beware of the credit when you see it. Exec, they'll they'll be like a real producer. It'll say produced by, and then there'll be this other credit, executive producer, and it'll be like like one of the the label co-owners or something and, and it, you always hear oh yeah um that person had nothing to do with the recording he he visited the studio one day just so he could like get his name on it somehow in october xtc lifted towers of london as the second single backed with the live version of set myself on fire in the Towers of London video, XTC mimed the song at the Albert Memorial in Kensington Gardens and by the River Thames near Tower Bridge. The members, clad in black, are seen collectively and separately in angled zoom-ins and upshots. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, to, to, to actually, you know, in order to identify Albert Memorial in Kensington Gardens, I took some screen, some screen captures of where Andy Partridge is by those statues, and I uploaded one to Google Image Search to ultimately find uh, that and identify the, the location. Yeah. Yeah, there's the, there's the cluster of, of like high relief statues around that monument, and then there's uh, the mo uh, pan outs where he's staying in front of that big monument itself. Yeah, that's all Albert Memorial. In January 1981, XTC lifted Sergeant Rock is Gonna Help Me as the album's third single, backed with the album tracks Living Through Another Cuba and Generals and Majors. XTC mimed Sergeant Rock on the um, January 22nd broadcast of Top of the Pops, which re-aired their segment a fortnight later between songs by Dire Straits and Cliff Richard, A Little in Love. Sergeant Rock reached number 16 on the UK singles chart and number 20 in Ireland. The final Black Sea A-side, Respectable Street, appeared in March 1981 with two non-album B-sides, Officer Blue and the go-to outtake, Strange Tales, Strange Tales. Officer Blue is a medium up-tempo number in E-flat, with a snaky guitar figure and a percolating rhythmic pattern. The lyrics concern a unit concern a uniformed idol of Colin's childhood. Dick Cuthel adds light flugelhorn over the song's second half. Strange Tales, Strange Tales fades in with multi-channel vocals and cuts to a twitching chorus on the clapped, 
hopping four note bass line. D, D, A, A, D, D. In the Respectable Street video, XTC mimed the song as a formally attired chamber quartet while their neighbors, a punked out elderly couple, bang on the wall with noise complaints. Ugh, that classical music. Black Sea reached number 16 on the UK albums chart and peaked at number 41 on the US Billboard 200. In Oceania, in Oceania, Black Sea reached the Australian top 30 and went all the way to number one on the New Zealand albums chart. Take This Town. XTC submitted an Andy exclusive, Take This Town, for the soundtrack to Times Square, a 1980 American musical drama about two runaway hopefuls on the New York City punk scene. RSO issued the soundtrack, a double album with tracks by The Cure, Gary Newman, Joe Jackson, Lou Reed, The Pretenders, Roxy Music, The Ruts, and Talking Heads, Life During Wartime off uh, Fear of Music. Take This Town is a hopping up-tempo number with a vocable intro in B and F sharp and lyrics of, oh, 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 B, B, F, F sharp and lyrics about taking a creature captive capped by a whistling refrain, another wh whistle hook, just like generals and majors. Ding, ding. And the title li and the title line, a metaphor for over enthusiasm. Yeah, take this town, a, a metaphor for being over enthusiastic. The vocable hook carries out the song with clipped, pinching guitar against the unrelenting beat. Bump, bump, bump. In the UK, RSO placed Take This Town on a split single with the Ruts Babylon's Burning. The soundtrack was produced by veteran music mogul and ex-Bee Gees manager Robert Stigwood, who approached XT XTC after their show at the Ritz in New York City and declared them the most exciting rock band since The Who. Eighty-one to eighty-two, in April nineteen eighty-one, XTC played triple bills in San Francisco and Los Angeles with Hazel O'Connor and Walla Voodoo. Hazel opened subsequent Northeast dates, including several with Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. On the seventh, um, on the seventh, they. I should just say XTC again. Yeah, oh, it's kind of dark in here. Ah, oh, oh, damn. Oh, gone. Getting all kinds of crap coming up. On the seventh, XTC played Chicago's Park West Theater where attendee Todd Rundgren greeted the band backstage. XTC headed south with ex-squeeze keyboardist Jules Holland and his new band, The Millionaires. On the 24th, XTC played the B&L Warehouse in Athens, Georgia, supported by unsigned newcomers R.E.M. In mid-May, 
XTC headed home for an 11-day UK tour with Zilch record signees Last Touch. It wrapped at the Cardiff's top rank with a June 2nd show, which turned out to be XTC's final UK concert performance. In Canada, Virgin issued Five Senses, a five-song compilation of recent non-album sides. It contains Wait Till Your Boat Goes Down and the recently excavated go-to leftover Strange Tales, Strange Tales, plus three B-sides from the Black Sea Sessions, Smokeless Zone, Officer Blue, and Don't Lose Your Temp Temper. Partridge produced and played percussion sticks on Urges, backed with Leipzig, the 1981 debut solo single by Thomas Dolby. Andy also plays guitar on two tracks, The Weakness in Me, Eating the Bear, on the 1982 A&M release, Walk Under Ladders, the seventh studio album by Joan Armitrading. On February 10th, 1982, XTC played before cameras at the Mark Thal in Hamburg for the German TV show Rock Palest. XTC then swung through Benelux for March 7th to 8th shows with French New Waver's Taxi Girl. After touchdowns in Germany and Italy, XTC appeared in Lyon and then Paris, where Andy abandoned their March 18th broadcast show at Les Palace. Exhausted, road weary, and fraught with stage fright, Partridge swore off live work. XTC became a studio only band. To quell further live demand, XTC added lush textures to their new music that would best be appreciated on a home stereo system. Meanwhile, Flexipop magazine issued a blue flexi disc of the unreleased go to era outtake looking for footprints. English Settlement. XTC released their fifth album, English Settlement, on February 12, 1982, on Virgin. It's a double album with 15 songs, including four by Molding, who wrote the opening pair, Runaways, um, Bow and Chain, and Half of Side Four, Fly on the Wall, English Roundabout. Musically, English Settlement contains a more layered sound than prior releases, with a newfound emphasis on polyrhythms and electric acoustic contrasts. Runaways fades in with a churning, jangly guitar pattern in G minor, joined by a slow, booming half-note beat. Colin enters with a rising vocal bowl, followed by a phonological play on the title, Oh, Rana, Oh, Rana. I'll run away. Suffixed with a lucid response. Uh, suffixed with a lucid response. Please come home. The lyrics concern a youth who's fled a volatile home situation. Colin offers glimpses. You cut mom, chasing dad with a knife. On an angular four chord verse progression. D, D, F, E, A minor. Later, a brittle piano break ushers the final stretch of the song, which fades into Ball and Chain, marches in with a choppy two chord riff with a constant key, C, a G suspended fourth, and C is the fourth in G's. That's why it goes. C C C C C C C dun 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 while while the the lower octave is going bum 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 Colin leads a public outcry um save us from the diggers and the tower cranes in a paradoxically chipper tone. Terry layers the piece with hopping, waving rhythmic elements as Colin warns of encroaching overdevelopment in England's once quaint townships. The song's flowing structure breaks for a synthesized fanfare refrain and a staccato guitar break. 
then modulates for a final go round of the chorus and fading fanfare. Senses working overtime opens with a plucked acoustic figure in A minor, joined by Andy's pained vocals, marked by double expressions, hi, hi, and elongated adverbs, slowly. The lyrics, sung from the perspective of a small boy who's just beginning to understand the five senses, takes in the positive in the first stanza and the negative in the second stanza, without judgment. On the second stanza, he's overlaid with rattling tambourine and low, fretless bass. Terry kicks in on the strummed, swelling bridge, where the narrator views life as one big sporting event. Like on the second, or like, and all the world is football shaped. It's just for me to kick in space. On the sing along chorus, the boy attempts to learn right from wrong trying to taste the difference between a lemon and a lime. The song has an extensive middle eight where the boy, still confused amid the rush of rattling sounds, in A with dropped thirds, perceives birds and bullies as equally beautiful. After the epic vocables of the song's climax, they modulate for a final go-round of the bridge and chorus, ending with Andy's becalmed refrain, the church bell softly chime. Yeah, that's a topic I never would have imagined. I, I never would have had, had an idea like that conceptually. Like, imagine what it's be like. To, it's like to be just a five-year-old boy. Or try and remember learning all your, understanding, coming to understand all your different senses for the first time and not really, before you really know right from wrong and just, Take in everything as it's as if it's interesting. Yeah. Um, Jason and the Argonauts opens with brisk. Uh, yeah. Jason and the Argonauts opens with brisk, plucked acoustic guitar in G, with faint, searing leads and cymbal spray amid Andy's distant salvo. There may be no golden fleece, but human riches are release. Like Jason and the Argonauts, he's traveled the outer reaches and seen a world filled with beasts such as two-timing heartbreakers and gold-digging man-eaters. Andy plays tense staccato notes in F-sharp and D, descending root note, amid the open cadence, medium up-tempo rhythmic flow, which stretches and submerges lines like the boy she thought, the boy she thought were green. Midway, the track spins on a circular bass line in G with phased guitar, drums, and lucid vocal fragments. The final passage layers on the intro and chorus in a dizzying whirlwind that slowly unravels to a fade out. No Thugs in Our House starts with acoustic strum in E on a raw snare beat joined by a syncopated electric figure and sonorous Andy vocals. The lyrics concern a mischievous boy, a mischievous boy from a straight-laced household who, to the shock of his parents, is wanted for hooliganism. And perhaps something a bit darker, he may be getting involved in kind of the young, kind of, uh, oh, that kind of faction of skinheads who uh, looked up to the National Front. Yeah. 
Yacht Dance fades in with plucked acoustic guitar and shakers. Dave and Andy weave an interlocked progression around Colin's traveling bass line. Um, D, B, A, G, F. Dun, dun. Okay. Lyrically, Andy paints vivid imagery of floating adrift. Dance like tiny boats with cotton sails upon the tops of... As metaphors for passion. All of a sudden, It's Too Late opens with a jangly descending figure. G to... No, 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 no. A jangly, a, a jangly figure that descends, that goes through all that those jangly notes to basically move the underlying root key, a semitone from G to F sharp. It's a medium slow somber number in D with faint shimmery acoustic backed chords amid dark sliding bass and sparse polyrhythms. Andy sings of disillusionment poverty, and loss of faith in a person's twilight years after a life of toil and sacrifice. Melt the Guns opens with a clipped electric figure in F with accented fifths and sevenths, countered by a plucked acoustic pattern. Andy's yelping vocables summon Terry's booming half-note kick drum and ticking percussion. The verse forms in D with fretboard filigree amid Colin's sliding fretless bass. Andy sings about the media's glorification of violence and weaponry and its effects on viewers, especially small boys. In the middle eight, a phoned-in Andy takes aim at the USA, the perceived epicenter of gun culture. Um, in the land of the free and the home of the brave, if we listen quietly, we can hear them shooting from grave to grave. Leisure is a mid-tempo romp with a chromatic chordal bass pattern on a vaguely musical 2-4 rhythmic roll. Andy, as a trained worker, laments his inability to shirk, which means like idle away, correctly. Yeah, they taught, they taught him how to work, but but not how to shirk correctly. The lyrics concern technology's encroachment on the workforce, uh, as timely a topic now as ever, yeah. God, to think 40 years ago, 41 years ago now, someone was writing a song about that. Now it's really, yeah, um, so much of the workforce being rendered obsolete by machinery and artificial intelligence. It's Nearly Africa is a polyrhythmic number in the West African high life idiom with the chanted refrain, Shake Your Bag of Bones. Shake your bag of bones. In the mostly harmonized song, XTC advised Westerners to drop their expansionist efforts and consequent warmongering and embrace the primitive rituals of sub Saharan life. Knuckle Down marches in with a hammered guitar figure in D. The chorus has two piercing guitar notes, um, the fifth and third in F. Um, dun, dun, no, 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 C, C, A, C, A, A, dun, 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 dun. Um dun, 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 dun. that's the, the, the hammered guitar figure in, in D. Dun, 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 dun. And then and then F F C C um C A C A C A five third fifth, third, F, on a tumbling quarter note beat. Andy um, encourages people to love each other's, to love each other's skin, regardless of color, and warns that the world might end with a big bang. He also urges listeners to embrace love and not wait until the coin drops, a British idiom that refers to belated understanding. 
Fly on the Wall bursts in with uptempo chordal vibrations in D. On the buzzing, tremolo laden chorus, C, uh, which goes through um, C, uh, C, G, major seven, D. The wall fly, Colin in a distorted tone, sings of peeking inside bottom drawers and witnessing family dirt behind closed doors. Down in the cockpit has a jittery uptempo intro in B and a vocable prelude to the verse in F and E with faint ska tinged chords and roaming bass lines on a slick beat. <clears throat> the lyrics address gender roles in the children's The lyrics address gender roles in children's book terms. On the bridge in C all the way from his, all the way through his dirt. Um, Andy offers his impression of male female dynamics since the Industrial Revolution. The chorus in B resolves on the notion that, um, resolves on the notion that behind every great man there's a great woman. Um, when he says, Man needs a woman to pull him right out of it down. He follows with a quipping refrain. Queen wants the castle back from the rascal. English roundabout winds in with an uptempo reggae ska arrangement. Choppy chords, crustic drumming, built on a four chord progression. F, C, uh, uh, B flat, um, E flat, B, uh, B flat. Um, <clears throat> F, F, C, F, um, E flat, B flat. Yeah, oh yeah, in 5 4 time. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, F, 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 C, C, E flat, E, E flat, E, E flat, B flat. Dun, 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 dun. Colin bemoans the noise, congestion, and impersonal nature of England's rush hour. The song fades out with a clean legato guitar passage on a darting chromatic bass line. Um, sp sparkling sounds appear and fade into Snowman. Fades in with an upward sigh and an undetermined set of syllables. The Latin phrase, um, oh, when I looked that up and couldn't really find a translation, I don't know if it even exists. It looks like a Latin phrase. Well, one of them translated the love, but the whole phrase didn't translate. The song has a teetering rhythmic structure with sliding fretless bass, sleigh bell chimes, and booming qu quarter beats against a faint ringing guitar pattern. Andy uses the snowman metaphor for his predicament as a kept man suspended in time. Seems like I've been here years and years and years years by a possessive yet aloof female. Sessions took place in October, November 1981 at the Manor, where Padham served as the primary sound man, having recently earned his first production credits with Phil Collins and The Police on uh, Ghost in the Machine. He produced English Settlement in advance of 1982 titles by The Call and Split Ends, uh, Time and Tide. The assistant engineer, Maynard Tape Op Howard Gray, also worked on 1981-82 titles by April Wine, uh, The Nature of the Beast, Cliff Richard, um, Fisher Z, Judy Tsuk, 
uh, Kate Bush, um, The Dreaming, Midnight Oil, 10987654321, Nazareth, OMD, and UB40. Partridge plays an array of instruments on English settlement, including alto saxophone, the angklung, and Indonesian tubed percussion, in addition to um, and the angklung. <clears throat> In addition to various guitars, electric, acoustic, 12 strings, semi acoustic, he handles the Prophet 5 synthesizer alongside Gregory, whose arsenal includes 6 and 12 string, acoustic and fuzz box electric, and nylon string Spanish guitar, plus piano. Molding handles piano and bass, fretless and fender. All three play percussion and the mini Korg synthesizer. English Settlement is housed in a textured dark green single sleeve with white engraved text and illustration designed by the art firm art designed by the Art Dragon firm under the direction of Ken Ansel, who designed contemporary covers for BEF, Gillen, The Human League, uh, Dare, and Men Without Hats, uh, their Rhythm of Youth uh, album. English Settlement shows the name and title engraved in a customized true type font with the cross T and I circling C. And I really learned something in researching this that I didn't know about. This right here's like the textured sleeve. The Equin outline is based on an aerial view of the Uffington White Horse, a Bronze Age chalk trench on the slopes of White Horse Hill in Uffington, Oxfordshire. I didn't know about this before. I, I, I didn't know about that phenomenon of... And it's been there, God, since like... Been there for what, like 1500 years now? Amazing. The LP labels reflect the color and font schemes with each side marked with giant numbers. The inner sleeves contain the lyrics as paragraphs on rusty paper with group and member picks by Alan Ballard, whose photography also appears on 1982 sleeves by Adam Ant, Funboy 3, Japan, and Motorhead. In January 1982, Senses Working Overtime appeared as the advanced single Backed with the non-album cuts, Blame the Weather and Tissue Tigers, The Arguers. Original copies have a four-fold sleeve with inner leaf pictures of fruit, fish, and parrots, plus lyrics to the two B-sides. The single also appeared on 12-inch with a fourth song, Egyptian, Egyptian Solution, Thebes in a Box, Part 5 in the Homo Safari series. Blame the Weather, uh, a molding number opens with a five-note piano motif in A minor and proceeds through skip-hop verses of bass, piano, and vocals in D minor. Doom, 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 doom. Colin chides a friend who blames the weather for the losses that were never possessions in the first place. The song for losses, for losses that were... The song has a teetering two-chord chorus, 
B flat to um, C, and stately music hall middle eight in G. It fades on a slow descending repetition of the opening motif. Tissue Tigers, the arguers, appears with a bass punctuated vocal in D that cuts to a polychordal descent, B flat with falling root note. The song is a medium the song is medium up-tempo with polyrhythms and um, faint, snaky guitar lines. Andy calls the bluff on a female whose taunts are all hot air. The title is a variation of the term paper tiger, a person who seems dangerous and powerful in print, but is weak and feckless in real life. In this context, a tissue tiger, which, which also references tears, is even weaker than a paper tiger. Egyptian, Egyptian Solution, Thebes in a Box, is an up-tempo instrumental in A with a clavinet synth figure and syncopated beatbox pattern overlaid with piping keys, trebly bass notes, and clipped guitar parts. Since his working overtime reached number 10 on the UK singles chart, number 12 in Australia, and number 15 in Ireland. In the video, XTC mime in real and slow motion on a soundstage with the wall sketch of the Uffington White Horse, also seen on Chambers' kick drum. In mid-March, XTC lifted Ball and Chain as the second single, backed with the Partridge exclusives Punch and Judy and Heaven is Paid with Broken Glass. Punch and Judy is an up-tempo tune in B, with a hopping beat and clean guitar licks amid choppy chords and scaling bass. Andy applies the name of a Renaissance puppet show to the subjects of a shotgun wedding. Judy, overweight, saddled, and miserable at 19, walks out on Punch, who seeks revenge. That tune is somewhat similar to um, I Take This Town, you know. Heaven is Paved with Broken Glass fades in with a backward tremolo sound in E and a faint synth line, whistle tone, then tightens on a chordal strum in F sharp that triggers the polyrhythmic verses. Andy contrasts his prior state of love, Heaven, with his current feelings of heartbreak, broken glass. In the Ball and Chain video, Colin riffs in a padded cell and toils with Dave and Terry at a wrecking site, where Andy appears as Magritte's man in a bowler hat with a briefcase of rats. XTC also made a video for the deep cut, All of a Sudden It's Too Late, where they mime in formal attire in a dark room lit by silhouette casting outside light. The video changes from saturated monochrome to soft focus color and pans constantly with frequent zoom-ins on Andy's impassioned expressions. The third and final English settlement side, No Thugs in Our House, appeared as a May maxi single with the short ambient drone over Rusty Water and the two cuts from the Drums and Wires bonus single, Chain of Command and Limelight. XCC performed No Thugs in Our House and Yacht Dance on the February 11, 1982 broadcast of the Old Grey Whistle Test. English Settlement reached number five on the UK Albums Chart and peaked at number 15 in Australia and Canada. The album reached number 48 on the Billboard 200 in the US where the clip for Senses Working Overtime went into medium rotation on the fledgling music cable channel MTV. Senses Working Overtime and Ball and Chain are chronologically the final two songs on Waxworks, some singles 1977 to 1982, a compilation of XTC A-sides released in November 1982 on Virgin. Its companion, Beeswax, some B-sides 1977 to 1982, contains the four B-sides of those two of those two recent singles and nine earlier non-album tracks including Pulsing Pulsing the Somnambulist and the Andrews Era rarities Hang On to the Night Instant Tunes and Heatwave for their sixth studio 1983-84 time frame here 
we'll review for their sixth studio album, XTC, XTC teamed with producer Steve Nye, who worked on 70s albums by Bebop Deluxe, Axe Victim, Brian Ferry, Judy Tsuk, Welcome to the Cruise, um, Crazy Cat, Nectar, Recycled, Quantum Jump, Self-Titled, and Roxy Music, Country Life. Recently, he worked on titles by Murray Head and the Japanese artists Akiko Yano, Masamo um, Tsuchiya, and Yukihiro Takahashi. XTC enlisted Nye on the strength of Tin Drum, the 1981 fifth and final album by Japan, the band. The initial sessions marked the final involvement of Terry Chambers, who objected to XTC's retirement from touring and the subdued nature of their new material. He moved to Australia and surfaced the following year in Dragon, a perennial Kiwi rock act that scored a comeback with their 1984 album Body and the Beat. XTC continued as a trio and hired sessionist Pete Phipps, a one-time drummer of the Glitter Band who recently played in Random Hold. The album was slated for an early 1983 release under the working title Fruits Fallen from God's Garden, but Virgin vetoed the initial track list and paired the band with Bob Sargent, a one-time member of Tyneside Mods, the Junko Partners, um, who in recent years produced sides by The Beat, Haircut 100, Headline, The Monochrome Set, Prag Vec, and The Transmitters. The Sargent sessions yielded an advanced single. In the gap between the album's projected and actual release date, Partridge produced The Naked Shakespeare, the debut solo album by one-time slap-happy guitarist and singer Peter Blegved. This was Blegved's first major undertaking since Q-Rone, his 1977 collaborative, collaborative effort with ex-Henry Cow bassist John Greaves. Um, uh, that partnership was one of several byproducts of the 1975 Cow Slap Happy merger, which also spawned the Art Bears. Partridge plays assorted instruments on the Naked Shakespeare, including Prophet Synthesizer on Weird Monkeys, First Blow Struck, Mellotron on Powers in the Air, and Guitar on Lonely Two and Karen. He plays Lindrum's on the folk ballad Blue-Eyed William, which features vocals by ex Bell frontwoman Maggie Riley who sings on Mike Oldfield's 1982-83 albums Five Miles Out and Crisis, including the hits Family Man and Moonlight Shadow. The Naked Shakespeare was engineered by David Lord, a sound man on recent work by Gabriel, Peter Hamill, Glaxo Babies, Europeans, and Stackeridge spin-off The Corgis. Lord produced XTC under their holiday guise, Three Wise Men on the December 1983 single, Thanks for Christmas, a folksy yuletide number with strummed acoustic guitar and sparkling glockenspiel. The B-side, Countdown to Christmas Party Time, has a contemporary dance pop arrangement with electronic drums and synth bass. Both sides are credited to Balth uh, Balthazar, Caspar, Melchior, pseudonyms for XTC. Partridge bonded musically with Lord, who produced the subsequent XTC album, meaning the one after the upcoming one, at his Bath Facility Crescent Studios. Okay, I need to take a bit of a break and pour myself some more coffee. Let's see how I'm sounding here. Um, Prophet Synthesizer on Weird Monkeys, First Blow Struck, Mellotron on Powers in the Air, and guitar on Lonely Two and Karen. He plays Lindrum on the folk ballad, Blue-Eyed William, which features vocals by ex Caddowell frontwoman Maggie Riley, who sings on Mike Oldfield's 1982-83 albums, Five Miles Out and Crisis, including the hits Family Man and Moonlight Shadow. The Naked Shakespeare was engineered by David Lord, a sound man on recent work by Gabriel, Peter Hamill, 
Glaxo Babies, Europeans, and Stackeridge spin off the Cordies. Lord produced XTC under their holiday guise, Three Wise Men, on the December 1983 single, Thanks for Christmas. A folksy Yuletide number was strummed acoustic guitar and sparkling glockenspiel. The B-side, Countdown to Christmas Party Time, has a contemporary dance pop arrangement with electronic drums and synth bass. Both sides are credited to Balth, uh, Balthazar, Caspar, Melchior, pseudonyms for XTC. Partridge bonded musically with Lord, who produced the subsequent XTC album, meaning the one after the upcoming one, at his Bath facility, Crescent Studios. Okay, I need to take a bit of a break and pull this XTC released their sixth album, Mummer, on August 30th, 1983 on Virgin. It contains 10 songs, including three call-in numbers, Wonderland, Deliver Us From The Elements, and In Loving Memory Of A Name. Beating of Hearts opens with syncopated toms amid deep bass in E, flanked with zither, I think that's what I heard, and a rapid fire rising falling guitar cadenza. A structure retained with added touches, uh, such as Spanish guitar and accordion, through three cycles of verse, bridge, and chorus. Lyrically, the song invokes the love conquers all principle. Andy bellows the hook line, Have you heard the loudest sound? And names a litany of evils that the sound overpowers. Louder than tanks on the highway, bombs in flight, thoughts of dictators, rattling swords, screaming warlords, he elucidates the message in the following stanza. For a heart without love is a song with no words, and a tune to which no one is listening. So your heart must give love, and you'll find that you shine. Like the rain on the leaves, you'll be glistening. Wonderland fades in with bird sounds, joined by a slow, glowing three-note melody in B-flat on the Prophet 5 synthesizer, on a slippery synth bass pattern. Huh. I guess I've seen it spelt both ways. With the numeral and with the character. The chorus has a light bubbly the chorus the chorus has light bubbly sounds and harmonies on three key on a three key ascent. Colin takes aim at hobnobs of the lower gentry. No dark horse like me can crample of your style and offers a warning to such people. Um, one day, um, one day you'll break, one day you will break out of your spell and I'll say 
Welcome to reality. Um, Love on a Farm Boy. Yeah, it's actually kind of a cynical song, despite the the lightness of it, the and the kind of crooning kind of feel. The uh, because it's got kind of like a romantic, almost like tranquil feel in it, sort of. And the video is quite beautiful too. More on that in a bit. Love on a Farm Boy's Wages is a medium slow finger picked acoustic tune in E with matted percussion and elongated vowels. Things swell on the chorus with twin guitar strum, tambourine, and intensified vocals. Andy, as a poor young farmer, vows to his girl to save his earnings, shilling by shilling, for their upcoming marriage. Great fire ignites with rattling metal and a five-note guitar riff in 3-4, A minor with drop sevenths to F. Da -na 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 Joined by a teetering drum pattern, <clears throat> things tighten on the strummed, upbeat 4-4 bridge in B-flat, followed by a marching string-struck chorus and slithery cello refrain a smitten andy um your glance your glance a match on the tinder wood uses metaphors of a burning animal arc to convey his heated passion the song fades out with shimmering echo deliver us from the element starts with a didgeridoo drone in e joined by a Leslie guitar figure and mid-paced tribal drum pattern. On the chorus, each cry to the Lord precedes a wash of choral mellotron. Colin acknowledges life's dependence on rain and sun and wonders what would be if the vital elements ceased to exist. Later, he argues that man's newfound knowledge of nature has caused a greater sense of Earth's helplessness. Assorted layers, tunneled winds, ghostly shrieks, envelope the final moments. <clears throat> Human alchemy is a medium slow number in B with faint reggae chords and injections of choral mellotron on a sparse booming drum pattern. The rhythm and sparseness resemble the tin drum track, Sons of Pioneers. Andy, in an understated yet emotive tone, assails the Atlantic slave trade of European colonialists. Um, we stole them from their freedom to be sold, to turn their skins of black into the skins of brightest gold. He refers to this process, we stoke the fires of trade with human coals, as a human alchemy. In a stark metaphor, he states, blood, the color of the rain that grew our wicked harvest. Lady Bird opens with strummed acoustic open chords in A, soft stand-up bass, and an eighth note piano key overlaid with brush drums, a pattern carried through the chorus in F sharp and refrain E minor. Andy talks about his seasonal communication with a ladybird. In Loving Memory of a Name starts with an organ fanfare that rolls into a twin acoustic filigree pattern in A with stately 16th note piano and a wavy polyrhythmic pattern. Colin mimics the 12 note guitar melody with his vocals as he pays tribute to the heroes and rogues who sacrificed themselves for the country. He swells to C major 7 on the line England can never repay you. You gave your life to be buried alongside the place you loved. Me and the Wind cuts in with a jittery 6 8 piano line, um, two in E. So, na, 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 na. and E, 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 there's like this F sharp, na, 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 in this E, E, E amid faint sliding bass and tribal toms, a pattern that holds through the verse in F and breaks to a flowing open cadence on the bridge in B flat. B flat, the far farthest key from for me. Andy uses the seasonal life of a bird to describe a love affair. Um, 
Your tune of spring had me whirling like a mad march and invokes the plight of prey for the love gone sour. The strings of your instrument were strangling me inside their snare. Though he's now happy to be freed from a love more like murder, he also feels empty, like a ship with no rudder. Funk pop a roll starts with a jangly figure that cuts to a medium up-tempo, two-chord riff, G, G, A, A, with howling vocables and picked silvery leads. Andy likens manufactured pop music to junk food with comparable health effects on the soul. Sessions first took place in September 1982 at Genetic Studios, a Pangborn facility owned by Martin Rushent. XTC completed three tracks with Chambers, Beating of Hearts, Wonderland, and the eventual B-side, Toys. He left the band in October during rehearsals for Love on a Farm Boy's Wages, which XTC cut with Phipps at the Manor, where Nye produced 11 further tracks during a round of November to December sessions. Mummer sports cover photography by Gavin Cochrane, who captured XTC as shadows of who captured XTC as shadows on wrinkled, limelighted... That, that's interesting. XTC are kind of technically on this cover. Yeah, they, they are... Technically, they're, they're shadows. That's the, they're sh the shadows of the three of them. Before you go saying, oh, they're not on the cover, no. <clears throat> as shadows on wrinkled, limelighted paper. Cochrane's photography also appears on early 80s sleeves by Nash the Slash, The Pretenders, Stray Cats, and The Who. XTC titled the album after Mummer's Plays, an English folk tradition of amateur costumed street troops who typically enacted medieval sword battles. On the album's inner sleeve, XTC are pictured in ragtag Mummer costumes, paperboard headpieces, a news cut armors, toy swords, amid the wrinkled paper. The lyrics appear on the flip side as cut up newsprint columns. These are mummer costumes. Great Fire first appeared in April 1983 as an advanced single, backed with the Partridge exclusive Gold. Sargent produced both tracks weeks earlier at Odyssey Studios in London. The single also appeared on 12-inch with two exclusive instrumentals, the lucid, glimmering soundscape Frost Circus and the wobbly steam and siren duel Procession Towards Learning Land, respectively parts 5 and 6 in the Homo Safari series. Gold has a fassy... <coughs> Gold has a brassy fanfare intro in C-sharp set to a Motown beat, which drives the ensuing verse, followed by a sprinting bridge in A and a sing-along chorus in D. Andy reckons that a troubled individual who's crippled with vanity, dropping mirrors, and age, gray and drear, won't be saved by El Dorado or Starling Dragons from regret. Skeletons in the closet or fear, pebbles in your shoe. However, this person can still cling to riches in the twilight of life, for the setting sun will color everything around you gold. Wonderland arrived in June as a second taster of the upcoming album, backed with Andy's Jump. The single appeared as both a standard record in a picture sleeve and as a picture disc with a replication of the sleeve image. Yeah, picture disc. Jump has a plucked acoustic pattern in F with a two-note figure, two to one, um, on a rising two-note bass line with cross-stick drums. Andy urges a love-shy woman to conquer her fears and take the dive. On the driving bridge, he states, while you're waiting, time is grinning. The Wonderland video opens at a ballroom dance where Colin's partner flees, sheds her gown, and reappears in a garden as a young girl who cartwheels her way to a maze where Andy and Dave paint white flowers red. She eventually takes an Orphelia dive. The fading shot shows her floating upside. So that's kind of a, that's a sad ending. It's a beautiful video. Uh, she, she goes from like a woman to just like this 
young girl, this innocent young girl, cartwheeling, but supposedly she's the subject of those lyrics, those rather kind of yeah, it's it's like it it I guess the video's trying to convey the contrast to the song itself, like that really soft, gentle, seemingly romantic song with lyrics that are a bit darker or more cynical than one might match the music and then so she's actually kind of a, a vain narcissistic person despite her innocence and and then at the end yeah she does that you know orphilia move um one month after mummer uh, One month after Mummer hit shelves, XTC lifted Love on a Farm Boy's Wages as the third single in a double seven inch with In Loving Memory of a Name and two non-album C and D sides, Desert Island and Toys. The double single appeared in a gatefold sleeve designed to resemble a leather wallet. Desert Island opens with plucked acoustic guitar and vocalies. The tune unfolds with sparse layers, acoustic Spanish filigree, accordion, matted toms, at a medium up-tempo pace through multiple key centers, um, D, F7, E minor. Um, Andy envisions an abandoned UK, a desert island with Great Britain written on its nameplate, where birds from Heathrow fill the night with people flying to escape. And that's a theme he would pick up on on the next album, you know. Yeah, what's the song? Uh, we'll find out in the future. I, I, what was the one where, where England gets blown off the face of the earth? You know. Toys starts with winding toy sounds, which trigger a mid-tempo, closed cadence verse in B, with harmonica, acoustic guitar, and jittery piano. An arrangement... An arrangement retained on the harmonized chorus in F sharp. Andy laments how innocent toys of the past are pushed down a ramp, melted down in a dolly concentration camp. He sees the toy games that children play, such as G.I. Joe war games, as practice for what they'll do as adults. If toys are quarrel, quarreling among themselves, what hope is there now for the world? In the first verse, where Cindy moves on from her Barbie dolls, he imagines that Ken will go back to Gay Bob. A Gay Bob was a doll manufactured in 1977 by Gizmo Development as the world's first openly gay doll. Andy also joked, and it was quickly taken off the market, I guess, and it was anatomically correct. Um, Andy also jokes about the action man figure with the commanding voice who's sexually not all there. A reference to how dolls and figures were not anatomically correct for the most part, including like Barbie and Ken dolls.
An outtake from the Mummer Sessions, Moldings The World is Full of Angry Young Men, later appeared as a 1990 B-side. It's a medium-slow jazz pop number in a roaming key center with drizzling cymbals, refined piano, and crooned, and crooned lyrics about maturity. Colin talks about the ideals and rage of his youth and how his attitudes and expectations have evolved with age and wisdom. The world is full of angry young men who think life owes them something, but you only get out what goes in. The Big Express. XTC released their seventh album, The Big Express, on October 15, 1984 on Virgin. It contains 11 songs. Colin wrote the opener, Wake Up, and the penultimate track, I Remember the Sun. Musically, the album weds their recent sophistication with the ornamental complexity of drums and wires and, on select tracks, the loudness of Black Sea. Wake Up um, at 4 minutes and 41 seconds opens with, slashing, opens with slashing G chords on the left. Oh, that one has an open third. And the right, an open fifth. So what, dun. So one's going like, um, dun, dun, is, they're both in G, G, and one's, and one's basically emphasizing the, the third, B, 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 and the other is emphasizing the fifth, D, 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 like, like an octave, dun, 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 dun. They, Andy and Dave, the two guys responsible for that double G chord, that choppy double G chord, are joined by a stop-start syncopated bass piano pattern on a clicking beat. Andy sings in the seventh note of G, which is F. See, he basically imposes an F, key of F on the G chord. The lyrics concern a working stiff whose submission to the daily grind and routine, um, whose submission to the daily grind and routine commutes has desensitized him to music and the suffering of bystanders. Bystanders. Session singer Annie Huckrack performs the faint echoing wake up repetition on the ascending refrain, a sparse open cadence passage with backward drum beats. Just past the midpoint at two minutes and 45 seconds in, the song turns instrumental with a medium slow ascent, F, G, A minor, A minor, A minor, overlaid with polyrhythmic drums, tinkling piano, and a recurrent glockenspiel motif, all gradually swallowed by choral vocalies. All You Pretty Girls opens with a vocal salvo on choral mellotron, B, E, F sharp. Andy, as a naval captain at sea, asks his crew to write a, to write a note for all the uh, uh, quayside girls, should he perish. The chorus has a marching sing-song theme carried midway with a whistling hook. He devotes the teetering martial verses in B flat to one special woman with whom he envisions rocking in a similar motion. Thematically, this song invokes 70s vaudevillian popsters sailor. Shake You Donkey Up has an uptempo twangy guitar lick in A with a syncopated rhythmic pattern in hillbilly vocals. Midway, a slithering fiddle solo cuts to a percussive whirlwind in F that heralds the final round of rattling, whip-cracking verses. The donkey in question is possibly a man who's taken a submissive role in his relationship. Siegel's screaming kisser kisser opens with staccato mellotron chords in octave Fs on a tumbling rhythmic pattern overlaid with thematic vocalies. The song assumes a jaunty 2-4 musical feel. Andy walks the beach with his new romantic interest, inches closer but out of reach. The waves embody his uncertainty. The sea is worship gray, it whispers fool, then slides away. 
The seagulls are his good luck charm. Screaming, kiss her, kiss her. This world over, okay, here's what I was yeah, trying to think of. This world over is a medium up-tempo number with smooth, synthesized chordal sustain on a slick, pulsing rhythmic pattern overlaid with ska-tinged guitar and crooning vocals. Andy, singing on the brink of World War III, asks an English refugee if she'll one day tell her newborn twins about what London was like before it was nuked off the face of the earth. Bit of a tense issue there. Before, um, if she'll one day tell her newborn twins about what Asks an English refugee if she'll one day tell her newborn twins about London and its culture before the city's impending nuclear annihilation. Asks an English refugee if she'll one day tell her newborn twins about London as it was before its impending nuclear annihilation. Okay, I think that reads reads better. Um, the everyday story of small town opens with a kazoo melody on hyperactive snare in A and D and turns to a jaunty marching musical chorus in G, capped with a brassy vocable refrain in D. The verses in F rattle with tumbling 2-4 precision, followed by a martial modulating bridge. Andy sings as an old oxo, um, that's uh, a beef stock, drinking teacher, who's raised several generations of townsfolk, who observes the locals, milkmen, clockmakers, lovers, flirty Miss Progress, and the town rituals, the Sally Army marching bands. I Bought Myself a Lyrebird opens with a piercing plucked downslide to E, 
The chorus features picked guitar against a sparse polyrhythmic pattern. The bridge, by contrast, has a flowing descent from B with an airy synthesized backdrop. The lyre bird in question is XTC's manager who, manager, who Andy characterizes as greedy with the caveat that lyre birds are really flightless on their own. Lyre bird is a pun on lyre bird with a Y, a ground dwelling Australian bird. Rain of Blows has a dirgy two chord riff in F sharp on a pounding mid tempo beat overlaid with harmonica and garbled vocals. The bridge has a chromatic chordal descent from B with released fourths. Andy rails against militarism, too many men dressed up as soldiers, and warmongering superpowers. Joe Stalin looks just like Uncle Sam, and also warns against um, violent revolutionary movements, saying violence is only a vote for the Black Queen to take back the throne. You're the Wish You Are I Had opens with a driving bass line in B that cuts to a windy verse with pounding snare, wiggling upward bass, fleeting piano, and wavering airy vocals in B with dominant fifths, followed by an exuberant chorus descending from E with stately musical piano. An overjoyed Andy meets the girl of his dreams and double emphasizes, you are, that she's everything he envisioned. However, he's yet to learn whether she's a woman of pleasure um, because um, the girl of his dreams um, eats the apple, as in Eve ate the apple, the apple from the tree of forbidden fruit, um, who will be satisfied in her needs with him um, because th this girl that he dreamed of also drinks from a cup. Invoking my cup runneth over. Um, yeah, so he's met the girl of his dreams, but is she into sex and going to be happy and lo it completely just into him? Like, um, I remember the sun opens with misty ride symbols overlaid with the verse arrangement of slippery stand-up bass, slow teetering drums, drizzling piano, searing drone in E, and a fleeting, fractious guitar line. The carefree verses cut to a marching bridge in F sharp and a winding, harmonized chorus in B. Colin reminisces about his school days and how, despite the pratfalls, such as unfulfilled grandeur, uh, like the, the line about enormous superpowers, intoxication, screwed up by a fireball, fireball like whiskey, uh, reckless driving, tarmac is on the road, chaff burns on a smoke wall, and injuries, uh, burning scars soon disappear. He most of all remembers the sun. His lilting high register on the middle eight in C cuts to a modulated barren chorus in E flat with sparkling ivory. Train running low on coal on soul coal at five minutes, nine seconds, opens with steam vents and chugging traction noise that signals uh, 30 seconds in a churning 12-string chordal strum in E with an open sixth. Dun, dun. Which proceeds through the verses amid pounding root note downbeats and gasping distant vocals. Andy sings from the point of view of a 30-year-old train with a lagging engine. He references the Sprinter, a then-new British rail diesel train that would be replaced itself after 30 years. He livens up on the bridge. Think I'm going south for the winter. Think I'm going south for the winter. Amid the chordal sustain that heralds the chorus. A jangly pattern in E with descending root notes with bleak lyrics. I'm going mad in this hinterland between young and old. I'm a 30-year-old puppy doing what I'm told. Sung with paradoxical buoyance. Midway, he drops fractious chordal shards amid the sheet metal percussion of the churning strum, uh, composed of three overdubbed 12 strings. In the final minute, the song discombobulates to a gasping slow fade out. 
Sessions took place between March and July 1984 at Odyssey and Crescent, where XTC, where XTC co-produced the Big, the Big Express with Lord, who worked on the album in succession with titles by Barbara Dixon, Glass Moon, The Icicle Works, their self-titled, and French singer Enzo Enzo. The engineer on Big Express, Glenn Tommy, worked beforehand with Lord on The Corgis, their self-titled album, and produced 1980 to 81 titles by Art Objects and Graduate, a mod ska combo with future members of Tears for Fears. Eight tracks, All You Pretty Girls, Shake Your Donkey Up, and All of Side Two were mixed by musician soundman Phil Thornley, an engineer on albums by The Jam, All Mod Cons, The Psychedelic Furs, Talk Talk Talk, Classic Nouveau, and Thompson Twins. He recently played bass in The Cure, um, playing stand-up on The Love Cats, and appears in the video of their 1984 UK hit, The Caterpillar. Phipps continues his auxiliary role on The Big Express, which also, which also features guest violinist Stuart Gordon, a former member of Corgi's and shortwave band who played on multiple Lord engineered albums, including Hamill's 1983 release, Patience. Seagulls features Euphonium by Steve Saunders, a trombonist on records by Curved Air, Phantasmagoria, James Wells, Jasper Van Hoff, Eastbound Expressway, and Michael Nyman. Original copies of the, of the Big Express are housed in a die-cut circular cover with the image of a locomotive wheel. The design, inspired by the 1968 Small Faces album Ogden's Nut Gone Flake, which also sported a round cover, was suggested by Partridge and created by Ansel's Design Clinic. The back cover shows a rusty, riveted train surface with varnished etches of three creatures, two elephants and a seahorse, that represent the members of XTC. Um, on the inner sleeve, XTC pose as engine crew inside the Lodestar, a 1907 Steve, st Steve train stored at the Great Western Museum in Swindon. Andy and Colin both sport crew caps with the initials of the Great Western Railway, GWR. Yeah, they all do. Okay, that's this represents the three numbers of XTC. Yeah, the seahorse, this and Yeah, they're all they they they've all got the initials. I just didn't see it on Dave because his was smaller and round. Six weeks ahead of the album, All You Pretty Girls appeared as the lead-off single backed with the Colin exclusive Wash Away. Original copies came in a double sleeve with the breast of a sailor's uniform outer and die cut to his chest on the inner, which sports a mermaid tattoo. The single also appeared on 12-inch with a third track, Red Brick Dream. Wash Away has a rising jaunty piano motif in, C, in, in F and C on a medium up-tempo snare beat. 
Collins laments a depression scenario with deserted streets and meals of boiled cabbage, where even Mr. Softy and his thousand Yorkshire puddings couldn't make his business boom. He flinches amid the chromatic dips of the bridge, with loose change in their pouches they couldn't spend it if they tried. As the track unfolds, they layer the verses with hyperactive toms and a spiking six-note guitar figure. Red Brick Dream has a sparse arrangement and phased, foggy vibe with drawn vocals, faint mid-paced acoustic strum, an E with a dominant fifth, and distant hammered metal sounds. Andy sings of the men who built Swindon's rail system, a set of chains for the horses of the gods. Iron horse is a 19th century term for steam locomotive. He mentions the locomotive classes Castles and Kings and the North Star, both built at Swindon Works, 1843 to 1986, the principal West, um, West England um, the principal West England maintenance center for the Great Western Railway. In the video to All You Pretty Girls, XTC mime in 19th century formal garb while Andy lip syncs from a clamshell and enacts the song in a cutout boat on a Victorian play stage with hand-operated waves. A royal marching band reappears throughout the clip. In late October, XTC lifted This World Over as the second single backed with Andy's blue overall. The picture sleeve shows a barren stretch of dirt dead grass and sparse overgrowth, identified as post-nuclear London. Blue overall starts as a mid-paced dirge that settles with a sludgy guitar figure in E, accompanied by wailing vocals and thudding drums. Andy gives the title two meanings, neither involving blue overalls, like as in the apparel item. Um, uh, he uses it to refer to the setting over all the rooftops, or like kind of like, in other words, across all the rooftops or something. Bluebirds fly apart, and his emotional state. The bones that cage the stupid heart has him feeling blue overall. He laments a woman who he thought loved him, but only rubber gloved him. And that is open to some sexual interpretations. In January 1985, Wake Up appeared as the third Big Express single backed with the Times Square obscurity Take This Town and the instrumental Mantis on Parole, part four, chronologically out of sequence in the Homo Safari series. It's a medium up-tempo track with churning ride cymbal overlaid with trebly bass lines, discorded guitar, dis discorded guitar parts, and droning buzz sounds. The Big Express reached the UK Top 40 and charted on the Kent Music Report in the Billboard 200. Later CD issues of the album include the three vocal b-sides as bonus tracks. Okay, and I'm going to cut it off for here right now. Um, and I'll just say... Yeah. After the Big Express, XTC found themselves in debt due to the financial mishandling of their estranged manager, Ian Reed, um, the subject of I Bought Myself a Liar Bird. With their career in limbo, Partridge suggested they masquerade under a different name for an EP of low-budget psychedelic songs. In light of the record's popularity, Virgin paired XTC with musician-producer Todd Rundgren. Okay, and that takes us up to here, which I'll read about in part two in several months. And then uh, I got this mostly done, just a, a little bit more musical description to this. And then um, right under here, I have under construction, meaning what comes after this is I'm still working on. There's, there's a lot of stuff I need to fill out to, to get this up to 2,000. So, yeah, XTC... Uh, Three and a half hours. That was XTC Part One, 1977 to 1984. Yeah, their first seven studio albums. Yeah, just 
an amazing run of great albums, and it continues too. Yeah. Um, next week I'll probably do Cream and Blind Faith, and then the week after that I'll probably do The Stranglers. Yeah, I'm going to do like one new wave band. I'm going to do new wave on alternate weeks and and like um, late kind of like bands that came about in the late sixties, early seventies on alternating weeks. Yeah. And uh, see my other XTC profile videos on the channel. I've I've profiled Helicopter about four years ago. I profiled some songs off Black Sea. Yeah, and. Um, you can support me on Patreon um, for for these efforts, like all this writing, this whole jazzrocksoul.com website, which is now um, three, which is now five years and three months old. And this year, I'm going to be very busy getting the English, the biggies of the English canon done, um, and then yeah, that's pretty much going to be this year's project and. And uh, you can also follow me on Substack for um, like things that I'm parts of, of different pages that are like under construction. That the parts that I get completed, I, I post on there um, now and then. Um, and I um, and yeah, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to get to help get this video pushed out to more people and help build this whole thing. And um, and go to the um, page on RYM, the X page, to see all the, if you're new to XTC, and for recommendations on what songs to start with. And right now, I am putting this page on um, the front page of my site. Um, oh, it is 2003. It is 2003 now. No. 2000. It is 2023. Oh, no. I think I, I messed up and I didn't save that time. So. Um, darn. Oh, it saved it. Yeah, it saved it. So uh, let's take a look at this. Um, if we go here, if we go up here. Yes, we are now on the front page. Okay, yeah, XTC are now on the front page of jazzrocksoul.com. Yeah, and read all the other uh, pages um, at your own leisure. Yeah, there's, they're equally massive. Well, bands like this anyway, Genesis, you know, Electric Light Orchestra, The Who, yeah, massive pages. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear travel trimaximalist, signing off. X, Y, Z.